Ladies and gentlemen and in-betweeners, I'm your host, Alexander Rodriguez, with On The Rocks Radio Show, where celebrities and cocktails mix tonight. We welcome women in entertainment, or better yet, women kicking ass in entertainment. We welcome actress, writer, and now director, Alicia Coppola, from Empire, Shameless, NCIS LA, Young and the Restless. The list goes on and on. If I printed out all of your IMDb, uh, we'd, uh, we'd have killed the Amazon forest. We have Marlene Forte, one of my favorite spices from TV and film, from Altered Carbon, Fear the Walking Dead, Marvel's Runways, Runaways, Dallas, and my guest co-host from Down Under, actress and executive producer Charlotte Larson from Awkward Love, Born to Dance, also, my special interview with Nia Verdalos from My Big Fat Greek Wedding, Connie and Carla, um, Oscar and Golden Globe nominated, by the way, who is appearing at Pasadena Playhouse tonight in Tiny Beautiful Things, uh, and me, your favorite host with the deepest voice. So raise a glass and let the drinks begin. <laughs> and most poor suckers are starving to death. I'd like to propose a toast. This is On The Rocks with Alexander, coming at you live, where I drink with your favorite celebrities as we talk about fashion, entertainment, pop culture, reality TV, and, well, that's about it. So pop a cork, lean back, and raise a glass to On The Rocks. Fasten your seatbelts. Going to be a oh lord, buttons and bows and pantyhose, this is On The Rocks, the place where we're too glam to give a damn, and I am really, really excited, and Kurt is very excited, we have women in the studio! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but before we begin, thank you to our sober listeners for tuning in. We love you, too. Thank you for holding our hair back and driving us home. Drunk texting is literally the only sport I'm good at, for which I have won awards. If you consider community service an award. <laughs> uh, true story. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hello to our listeners around the nation on iHeartRadio, United Broadcasting Network, Player FM, Stitcher, TuneIn, Satchel, iTunes, Google Play, and Spotify. Of course, we are on Facebook Live on Trendy Now in San Diego, True FM in Ohio, and on the West Coast on GED Magazine, the largest LGBT print and online magazine on the West Coast and nationally on Queer 40. Check out my new movie news videos on Queer 40. Talking about women who kick ass, this week, Daniel Craig from the next Bond film, which we know has been plagued with problems, called in his good friend Phoebe Waller-Bridge to punch up the script. That must be an awkward uh, writing room, you know, because it's like, <laughs> it's Bond, it's men's room. And then here she comes in, she's like, yeah, we're going to punch it up, make it good. And Daniel Craig is like, yep. Uh, so that's what's <laughs> happening. <laughs> uh, the show is brought to you in media partnership with Here TV. Here TV reaches millions of viewers each month and has produced Academy Award winning films in addition to receiving three daytime Emmy Award nominations. On the Rocks now appears on Amazon Prime, Facebook Watch, and HearTV.com, and Here TV app for free. Whoop, whoop. Uh, our website has been updated. It looks gorgeous, and you can listen and watch everything that we have to offer at ontherocksradioshow.com. My mom, Mama Rose, is in the chat room on ubngo.com and Facebook. Ask her your question. She will answer it. If it's a burning question, she's going to text me and we will answer it on air. Please keep her busy. She's next to the vodka and I don't need her drunk <laughs> setting me up on Christian Mingle again. Because <laughs> we all know Mormons are hotter, don't we? Mormons are so hot because they ride the bicycles and walk so much so their glutes are like in shape <laughs> and they wear little ties. <laughs> Okay. Uh, hello to our engineer. Hey, Kurt. How are you? Hey, how's it going? Good, good, good. Okay, Kurt, hurry up, because we got a full show tonight. Uh, do you have a pun for us? I, I always have a pun uh, for you. Ladies, I apologize in advance for what you're about to hear. I, I, I was uh, hit um, multiple times by uh, a bicycle on the way home. Did you know that? It was a... Pretty... You should have spoke up. Speak what? No? Oh, Is it close. a spoke that was, joke? That was nice. Okay. No, it was a vicious cycle. Oh, but boom, boom. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> Sorry, ladies. <laughs> I didn't want your final sober moments to end like this. <laughs> like us on Twitter and Instagram at On The Rocks on Air, Facebook, On The Rocks Radio Show. Send me an email, book me for a wedding, funeral, quinceanera, bris, I don't care. I will do it. Info at ontherocksradioshow.com. Want to join On The Rocks on the show? Thursday, April 27th, I return to Santa Ana College for their second annual Drag Education, a fun evening with drag history, performances, and Q&As. And it's for LGBT and ally. Ever wanted to know about drag queens but didn't, were too ashamed to ask? Now's your chance. Sold out last year, so make sure you get your tickets. Go to sac.edu communication for more info. Saturday, May 18th, I am the MC uh, for Vanderpump Dogs World Dog Day in West Hollywood Park from 11 to 4. And I'm hosting oh, the dog show yeah. at Red Carpet, by the way, Red Carpet. Yes. With every Bravo celebrity you could shake or throw a stick at. Get it? Mm -hmm. Throw a stick and it's dog? Okay. Uh, <laughs> and I will be on stage with Lisa Vanderpump and the cast of Vanderpump Rules, which they're filming for Vanderpump Rules, by the way. 
come out. Uh, Gay Wine Weekend is a three-day celebration from July 18th to 21st. I'm telling you now, so before you spend all your money at the clubs, uh, come see me in Sonoma Valley for gaywineweekend.com. All right, let me introduce my guest co-host from Down Under, Charlotte Lonson, uh, Larson. Born in New Zealand, Charlotte moved to L.A. for the first time to study at both USC's producing and directing program oh, and New York good. Film uh, Academy's acting program. Yep. After graduating, she moved back to New Zealand. Oh, so we gave you great education to take back. Okay, thanks. Uh, <laughs> she began her own production company, Random Films, which she expanded into random groups of companies in New Zealand and the U.S. Continuing her passion, she created the Emerging Artist Trust in New Zealand, where she mentored emerging artists in film, theater, and visual arts, as well as granting small uh, grants to emerging artists in these areas. She moved back to L.A. to further advance her acting career while still working as a producer. She attended the Stella Adler Academy of Acting, where she now sits on the advisory board having set up a scholarship for New Zealand students to study at the school. She is currently a member of the National Association of Professional Women, Women in Film and Television, Screen Producers and Directors Association, and Australians in Film. Best known for her work as an executive producer for the New Zealand hit series Awkward Love, as well as the popular films Gloria, Great Expectations. Her upcoming projects include the 1980s Australian sitcom Legends, uh, detective web series Square Brains, hmm, uh, a documentary we need to talk about AI. Please welcome Charlotte Larson. Nice, nice, very nice. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so I didn't know like how like New Zealandish your accent was going to be. But it, it's a little toned down. Yeah, I, I mean, I've been in L.A. about eight years now, so I'm kind of picking it up. Um, my family are like, can you please come home? You sound American. You need to sound more like a Kiwi. <laughs> um, so every now and again, there'll be a word, and people are like, oh, wait a minute. That's, that's from somewhere else. Um, and then other times people are like, where are you from? I can't tell. So, yeah, it comes and goes. <laughs> well, and I've stalked you on your social media. Uh, where's your Instagram, girl? I don't have an Instagram. You need to get Instagram. This girl has been to every <laughs> award ceremony you could think of, except Golden Globes, which we're going to take care of this year, has hung out with every actor. I, I get so jealous swiping through your, your Facebook. It makes me sad. <laughs> <laughs> Come with me next time. We'll oh, I fun. will. Yeah. And, and who's the cute guy that you're always hanging out with? That's my roommate, my best friend. Yeah. What's the address? Um. <laughs> you guys he's so cute <laughs> uh, but you know the theme today is women in entertainment and we're going to talk about some pretty heavy subjects in our fun way with our with our amazing panel but i need to know working in new zealand then coming to work in la uh, literally two different environments mm -hmm. we're talking now in hollywood about gender equality um uh diversity body positivity has this been an issue in new zealand i mean is there its own me too movement yeah, there's a little of that going on. We're such a small country, but we're, um, you know, we're a very liberal country. We're the first country in the world to give women the vote. Yeah. Um, we, um, we have, we've had gay marriage for a while now. <laughs> so, you know, a lot of, a lot of great things, but, the, you know, there are still issues. And I think that's, that's everywhere. It's not isolated to any particular industry or country or anything like that. And, um, you know, we're trying very hard to get more equality for women. And, you know, we have a... Um, a film commission in New Zealand that's really great and supportive of the industry and they set up women's directors programs and funding for women to do projects and things like that so they're really trying to advocate for women and yeah make it happen. Well I'm glad this is like a global conversation um, because I had no clue I wonder if it was just Hollywood and, and I still am doubting Hollywood sincerity as to like really how much they want it or is it a buzzword for the, the next few years? But it seems like it's spawning global conversation. Yeah, there's um, there's a lot of, I guess, conversation around it. Um, we we have a female prime minister, which is awesome, yeah. um, and you know she's so great. She she had a baby whilst in office, and she's like, I'll take six weeks and then I'm back. And <laughs> so th yeah, it's it's a lot of um, you know trying to change things and and. Um, I think we're getting there, but there's always going to be issues, and I think the more we can try and make the issues smaller than they, they need to be is, is always a good thing. Um, and I know that you kind of commute from L.A., you, you go back and work in New Zealand. Mm -hmm. What are some of the things that still shock you about L.A.? <laughs> like the people, the food portions, like what, what is it <laughs> you? I, I guess I'm really used to it by now because I've been here for a while, so I'm, I'm kind of just like... I'll go with the flow. Go that, with the flow. Uh, yeah, I, I go to New Zealand. It's a different way of life. It's I have my friends, my family, and then I come here, and I have my family and my friends and all that kind of stuff. But um, it's just 
so easy for me now to switch back and forth because I do go back and forth quite a bit. And then just to throw other things in the mix, my mother, um, I grew up in England, my mother still lives there, so I, I go to London and that's completely different. So I'm, I'm kind of used to just getting in to different cultures and getting on with it. But yeah, I was, um, you know, the, the portions of food sizes here and trying to eat healthy and that kind of thing is, is really hard in, in, the, in the US. I lost 10 pounds when I went to England for one week and there was nothing to eat or it was like, I was yeah. like, okay, that was a good appetizer. Like, no, that was your meal. Yeah. Let's go see a show. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but England, New Zealand and LA, so you know how to party, but you still have manners. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go with that. <laughs> um, I know that you work in a lot of different projects. You have done everything from film, television, documentaries. What's the most important thing that you look for when you want to work on a project? Um, Besides the paycheck. <laughs> that's not yeah. always a good thing. Um, yeah, I look for two things. Mainly, um, if, if I get both boxes ticked, perfect. If it's one or the other, yeah, I'll consider it. So the first thing I look for is always the script. It's got to be a great story. It's got to be something that moves me, something that makes me think, something that other people will enjoy. It's got to be... Obviously, scripts can be rewritten a few times, you know, if you need to, but it, it's got to be a really strong script, a really strong story, and something that people will go, yeah, I want to see this. And you've got to imagine the script on the screen and be like, yeah, I can see that happening. So that's the first thing. The second thing is the people. It's a lot easier in New Zealand for me to do that because we have such a small country and a small industry. So. People working in the industry, you know them already or you've worked with them before. And if you haven't, they have a reputation because everyone knows everybody. Well, and you know, even in L.A., and I'm sure you ladies, uh, you know, I was speaking to Nia Barraos earlier today. She's like, I love Alicia. It's a really small circle when you think of how many people are employed in the entertainment industry. Yeah. You burn a bridge, girl, you're on Survivor right. Island. Right, yeah. I mean, we're a country of four, four and a half million people. So that's a country with the population half the size of LA in a country the size of Texas. That's crazy. So My grinder would be like, next person's five miles away. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the, the film industry is, is you know, very small and intimate. We know each other pretty well. And if we don't, our friends do. So I, I look for that. So the people and the script, and if they tick both boxes, then I'm going to be in. Well, I'm really excited for you to, uh, to help me uh, with our panel for yeah. today. I am so excited. <laughs> um, uh, you ladies kick ass. Like when I say <laughs> kick ass, I'm not blowing smoke. Um, to reintroduce, Alicia Coppola, NYU alum, started her career on TV on MTV's Remote Control. There are YouTube clips of that, by the way, which are really That's fun. Where I know you yes, from. but also uh, soap opera, Another World. Another world. Uh, since then, she has appeared in about every show you can imagine. Star Trek Voyager, briefly. NCIS, Law and Order, Criminal Intent, Jack Dawson's Creek, Monk, Crossing Jordan, Two and a Half Men, Bones, of course Jericho, Teen Wolf. Oh, Teen Wolf, so sexy. Uh, 24, <laughs> kind of, what we'll talk about. Returning to Soap Robbins to make out with Eric Braden on Young and the Restless. Most recently making her strong entrance for a multi-episode arc on Empire. The FBI with the hottest hair I've ever seen. <laughs> um, <laughs> look for her as a series regular uh, on CBS's Blood and Treasure coming out this summer. So excited for that. Also appeared with Gary Oldman and Ving Rhames in Sin, as well as a National Treasure Book of Secrets. She's the author of Gracefully Gone, available on Amazon, uh, a combination of her father's journal written in 1982, two years after his diagnosis and remission with brain cancer, and her journals written in 1990 and 1991. Now, the first time you were on the show, I read it right before you came on the show. Wow. Is, is all I have to say. Um, and the book has spawned a new life of sorts uh, in Alicia's debut as a director and screenwriter in Between Us, a short film starring her actual husband and three daughters, now hitting the festival circuit. Please welcome back Alicia Coppola. Thank you. I hate to correct you because I love you. Oh, God. Oh, Alicia. God. Already. Alicia. 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 Oh. Oh, okay. Alicia. 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 How about, how about, Latino, cabrón. How about, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alicia. Alicia. Yeah, yeah. And I went to Ibiza, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, uh, welcome back to the show, Marlene Forte, Cuban-American actress born just outside of Havana, Cuba, proudly raised in New Jersey, New York area. I am. Uh, founding <laughs> member uh, of Labyrinth Theatre Company. She credits her career to her uh, Labyrinth Familia, uh, which she learned her craft alongside jo uh, John Ortiz, Gary Perez, Judy Reyes, Sam Rockwell, Philip Seymour Hoffman, huge act, a list of actors that we know and love, and over a 20-year career, she started her career by owning a video store, by the way, 
<laughs> uh, she has consistently appeared on television, film, and stage in a wide variety of roles, as well as producing films and directing for stage and screen. Credits briefly include Law and Order, Crossing Jordan, Real Women Have Curves, West Wing, CSI, ER, Cold Case, House of Pain, Castle, The Mentalist, The Secret Life of American Teenager, The Reboot of Dallas, NCIS, New Orleans, Fear the Walking oh God, Dead, old. Superstore, The Fosters, <laughs> Altered Carbon, Claws, Shooters, Mayans, Room 104, <sighs> and Marvel's Runaways. Look for her in El Chicano oh in theaters God. May 3rd with George Lopez and Raul Castillo. Oh, Raul. I play his mama. Oh, God. I know. You guys, I can't even imagine <laughs> seeing you guys on, on screen. It was amazing. It oh. was so much fun to work on that. And I, I, I could totally see that relationship, yeah. by the way. Yeah, um, And of course, also watch out for her in Knives Out with Tony Collette, Daniel Craig, and my boyfriend, Chris Evans. Please welcome back Marlene Forte. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to be back. Now, both you ladies, like, you got to work with Chris Evans and uh, Alicia. We know uh, your pictures of you and Zac Efron, I have mm. seen many times. <laughs> many, many times. <laughs> <laughs> was your husband like, you're going to on set to work with, with Chris, uh, with uh, Zac Efron? Was, was he a little nervous? It was like, do I burp him or what? I mean, it's a child. <laughs> no, no, no. Have you seen his abs? No child has abs like that. He's a child compared. No, he's my child. You guys had, had chemistry, though. Uh, yeah, he was lovely. Lovely. Mm. Lovely, lovely, lovely boy. All right. Yes. Um, <laughs> you guys, I encourage you to, to watch uh, their performances from the beginning. A lot of it's on YouTube or on In Demand, also uh, the recent stuff. But we are here to actually talk about women in film and some of the nitty gritty of, of what's happening. Uh, because as a male on the outside, I talk to actresses all the time. I wanna know what's really going on. And from people that are currently working and working hard and have worked hard in the industry for a while. Um, I wanna talk about ageism in entertainment. Because in, from my point of view, it's not as a big issue as, as, a, as it used to be. We have like Jessica Lange owning TV, coming back, playing sexy, sexy roles. And I don't see it as big of an issue. Is it just me or what is your own personal experience with age? Like you, coming back to Young and the Restless, K you know, kissing Eric Braden, that's a much, much older, older actor. And like no, nobody ever th thinks about that. You know what I mean? They do now. Well, I, <laughs> to me, that was irrelevant. Yeah. Um, I, I was offered a job when I needed a job, and I took the job. Um, I thought he was very lovely. Um, I didn't, I've never actually, well, I'm going to take that back. I think I've always kind of felt that I, I have um, peaked later in life. And I feel that when you hit like 40s in Hollywood, there's kind of a lull. But if you can maintain it mm -hmm. and if you can sustain, I'm 51 on Friday. Happy birthday, by oh, the way. Thank you very today. much. And I'm really proud to say that because I, I kind of feel like I have surpassed that ageist thing. I, I never really felt it to begin with, but I feel now I'm just coming into my own. And I feel like everything I've done thus far has prepared me for what I'm going to do now. Well, number one, you look fantastic, uh, yeah. but there's a lot of actresses, uh, myself included, that don't talk age at all because they feel it limits you right away, whether you look a certain age, if an agent knows it, if a casting person knows that age, they don't think of you outside. Yeah, I that, think that that's box. bullshit. Because okay, good. That's good to hear. I do, too. I, 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 I yeah, do. I think, I, I think people put too much damn. I'm I'm going to be 58 in July. God bless you. Shut S up. Yes. So um, the, the truth is my trick is I play up. I play up. I've stopped dyeing my hair. Grandma's fine. I don't care. Um, I don't, I've never worried about that either in my head because I started late in my life. You, you were like 30. I'm a, I yeah. was 30 almost when I started. So I started late. So if I, they already told me I was too old when I was starting. So I should have quit then. Right? Yeah, you should have died. I should have died. Yeah, right there. Died. And let yes. me tell you, when yeah. I started, it was the age of 92, 90210, whatever. And that uh. was, then there was a lot. That, I mean, that was everything that was coming out. And because I became a mom so early in my life, I always played moms, which were older. So I. You have played moms for a long time. I have played the of, mother of, of every Latina in Hollywood right <laughs> yes. now. Yes. Girl, I make them look good. <laughs> I'd like to my couple mom. Couple of cops, but not, not with the hair. This one's got I'm that color. I'm telling you, you guys watch Empire Data, it's like, whoosh. I know. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, she's here to play, okay? Play but and slay. But at 51, I didn't have that hair either, so, you know. <laughs> like in real life, it's like, oh, I just want to touch it. I'm like, I, oh. Yeah. My daughter has that hair. 
no salió a mí. <laughs> and Marlene, I know your, your start with it. Um, you, 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 were, you were married, and you were going to be the doctor's wife, and, and you were going to be mom and stay at home. And after a few years, you thought, no, that's not what you want to do. Yeah, I, I think I decided it just in the cusp before it got too, too old and too scared. And I don't even know what that means, too old, too scared, you know. Um, but I know that um, in my head, if I hit 30, it was going to be too late. So mm -hmm. like by 28, I decided to make a move. Mm -hmm. <laughs> until just the last moment before I was like, I better do this now. I wonder if working in theater, because um, I know you were accepted with, what, what like, th 13 other uh, Labyrinth. Members? I was a, one of the original Labyrinth. OG Labyrinth. OG in the house? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and what an amazing group of actors. I wonder if playing theater roles cause you not, not to limit yourself or put yourself in I, character. I think that's true. I, I also think that after you give birth, correct me if I'm right, you don't give a, cr and you survive. Twice, I, I, I am going to go down to you. Three because, times. Three oh, times. Way. Two way. I I only, they only did that shit to me once. <laughs> and after that, I was like, the first time you're ignorant. After that, you're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but my daughter is my best production to date, so I will still say that. So any woman who has more than one child, I bow down to as the goddesses that they are. Because after you do that, you're not afraid to be an actor. Mm -mm. And, and, <laughs> and by the way, if, if, if I can piggyback, yeah. um, I had three daughters. There is, there, is noth there is nothing in this industry that can shock me more or teach <laughs> me more. That's right. I mean, everybody I deal with to me is a preschool class. Yeah. <laughs> They're a bunch of toddlers. That you go on set, you're like, yeah, tell me something, yeah, buddy. That, okay. need, <laughs> that need a nap. <laughs> really, I... Or I, a timeout. Yeah, 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 or a timeout. Um, and to or a quote, pacifier. And, and to quote Ryan Reynolds, I believe that, um, that he said that there's not a problem that a pair of breasts cannot solve. That's true. And that is true on every At every level. level. At every level. <laughs> and so after I... I mean, after I had Mila, it was a little bit different. Mm -hmm. But after Esme and Greta, after I had had three babies yeah. and I was 42 years old and then coming back into the industry after having three children going through a year of postpartum depression there it was like what everything else becomes what? so silly what do, what are you gonna <laughs> auditions and, you don't like me okay no, and, <laughs> and, priorities change yeah and by the way I always say it to my husband um how can you not want what I have to offer, which is so much richer and deeper and more informed and defined than it ever was before. I have so much more to offer. Mm -hmm. it's, it's that kind of Diane Keaton in As Good As It Gets when she was like, what am I yeah. supposed to do with yeah, all yeah, of yeah. this? And that's what it is. Yeah. No, uh, I, I don't know if you watch your own material, but did, did you no. experience, oh, you, you, you don't? <laughs> I try not, not unless, I try about, not to. Yeah. But <laughs> Except when you were doing ADR for Room 104. Yeah, that shit scared the hell out of me. It scared me because I know you. And I was like, I'd never Whoa. seen that side of me before. I was like, oh, I understand why everybody was scared of me that day. Yeah. <laughs> your husband Oliver was like, Wh whatever you want, I'll watch the dishes, I'll, I'll take out the trash. Like, just, just don't turn it to Room 104. Um, but did you feel a shift in how you approach as an actor um, your different characters. You mean after you have children? Yeah. Well, since I started after I had a kid. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that I, I didn't have an ego. That's for sure, because I didn't have the luxury. I was a single mom, at, you know, early, and I was like, yeah, I'm going to do commercials. I am going to do them in Spanish and in any language you want me to do them. I will do industrials as long as I get my, you know, I am vested, honey. I worked for that shit. Hustle. <laughs> I'm, uh, yeah. Hustle. So I, I didn't. I didn't have the luxury to be like, oh, I'm an artist. Even though I do consider myself an artist, I didn't have the luxury to be like, oh, I just worked. If it was work and it was theater, anything, it didn't matter, I just wanted to work. And I also felt like I had, I went to college and I studied this for my parents and I got married and I had a kid and then I was like, I'm gonna be 30, I have to start doing things for myself, so. Well, and, and that gives you a power that I think if you start young as an actor and don't have children, it gives us, uh, that's why I think women should rule the world, because <laughs> we just become this kind of, we, we can see things in a different, once you, because we can give life, um, we see things in a different perspective. Uh, things that matter. 
You know, we're very clear what matters and what doesn't. <laughs> well, I think, uh, and, and the women right? go, and, and, and this is me talking as, as a man, but a gay man, so. Uh, <laughs> but, but there's certain. You're in touch with your female side. But And there's certain life changes that men don't go through. Like, you know, we were talking about the, the Young and the Restless situation. Yeah. I've watched Young and the Restless for years, and I'm so excited when you were on it, and I was like, oh. I learned my uh, virginity on the Young and the Restless. Oh, you did? I yeah. did. Now, I'm you. I was like in eighth grade and that show was like you were probably too young to well, no, <laughs> you look much younger i would have said that but now i know your age so <laughs> i was like but yeah ring the restless but it's funny because like men you, sean connery and could still be cast with like a 21 year old and nobody ever doubts mm. it um you know men are our fathers but it's not the same physical and emotional experience uh not to take that away from fathers but there's this different emotional range that men in real life and even male characters don't have in terms of 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 being an actress. That's very interesting because I um, I remember talking to a director once and she was talking about an actress who came in to play a mother, and she said I knew immediately she that she was not a mom. mother. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. But a man, you won't. You don't question if he's a dad. Yeah, you don't really question it because maybe that dad's a not be like a little detached. Yeah, a little detached. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. Nobody ever says you're not a dad, but uh, but you can tell when a woman is not a mother. You can just tell. That is very true. Um, I don't know if that answers your question. No, and no, I don't know yeah. why. I can't pinpoint it. It's just no, a weight, I or yes. I don't know what it is. It's a choice of the way well, you. I think it's a knowing. I think hmm. I think that there might be you know. Um, I am actually doing Mark Cherry's new um, new series, Why Women Kill. And, and Mark Cherry knows women backwards well, and forwards, inside right, and out, women, golden girls, desperate housewives. I mean, writes women like he's in my vagina. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> this guy. That'd be the only time for Mark Cherry, yeah, by the way. <laughs> but you said it was off limits. <laughs> Sorry. I did. The vagina's off limits. But, but I do have this line where my son is saying, or my daughter, or whomever is saying, you know, somebody hit me. Well, whatever. What do I look like? Your body? I hit him back. Yeah. Right? I can say that in a way. And mean it because I don't give a shit whether you beat up your little sibling. Because I have three daughters who who will do it all day long. Mm. I just go and butter toast. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. And, there's, and there is a certain thing that real moms have that moms who are playing it, you can tell. That is very interesting. And Charlotte, being, being a younger actress, yep. um, I, I know you, you don't have kids. Nope. So here in this conversation, it's like, oh God, I, I, I gotta have a kid just so I can be a, a better actress. No, or, it's or instinctual. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's instinctual. Yeah. So in your mind, knowing that there's like these life experiences as a woman, it, it helps with that process. You as an actress, when you hear something like that, how, mm -hmm. how do you process that? Um, yeah, I mean, I don't have children, so I am also an only child, so I don't have siblings. Um, same, I wouldn't know how to play a parent yeah, like, if my life depended on it. Um, my friends have children, so I'm like, you know, the cool auntie who exactly. lives in L.A. But you get to go <laughs> home at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, that's that's great, but I, you know, I, I look at my friends with kids, and um, I had one of my great friends from New Zealand come visit. She's brought her five-year-old daughter, and I love them to pieces, but after a week, I'm like, how do you oh do this? After five I know. minutes, I, I know. Yeah, I it, know. Was, it was a week with a five-year-old, and you know, we, we did Disneyland, and we did all these other things, which were really fun, but you know, they get tired, and I'm like, I'm exhausted. So you know, having friends who have kids, and, um, and I don't, I just, I really admire them. It's not something that I want to do, but... And it's good that you know that. Yeah. That's exactly yeah. right. It's good a that lot you of know people that. Yeah. in entertainment are having kids because it's part of the process yeah. that yeah. have no business having. And I kids. always I always get a lot of, of hate for that. They're like, Oh, but you have well, to you have Well you just kids. haven't found the right person. Yeah, yeah. I think you my daughter is on I think my daughter's on that crowd too. Yeah. And I was like I do, do not have to have a child to make me Yeah. Grandmother. No, I actually <laughs> think that being female doesn't in it it's not a right, it's a privilege. Yeah. And absolutely. if you know that you don't want children, please don't do that. Because yeah, it's yeah. better. It's yeah. My husband never had job. a kid, and he knows it. He knew it. He was happy to have, you know, marry someone with a child. Like mm -hmm. it's just like I'm a playwright. My plays are my kids. I, you yeah. Know. So it's it's actually amazing to know early. 
Although I think my daughter said it to me at the age of 10. <laughs> uh, she's like, she you know, I'm not her. having children. And I was like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I knew I hated kids when I was in preschool. I didn't want to talk to any of them. Yeah, you're like, mm. yeah. Well, I, I turned 24 and my mother was like, I was 24 when I had you. Where are my grandchildren? Like, ah. Uh, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, mm, no. And she's still waiting. But, you know, it's funny when, when a, a news... Uh, media and because I, I, I've read articles and interviews that you've done, they always put a woman's age next to when when uh, she gave birth. Mm -hmm. They never say that to, to the father. It doesn't say, mm -hmm. you know, um, so and so, age forty two, had a kid. But for every woman, they have to put the age. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like that's little things that are well, done that are in our thing, minds. Right? Yeah. And, yeah. and I think the truth is that the more we lie about it, this is the way I look at it. I have earned every one of those years. Yeah. I've earned mm -hmm. every one of those years. If I start to take away those years, I start to take away my child's years. I start to take, so I'm like, I think I look good for 57. I like to say that. Oh, you look <laughs> I'm like, God. I'm going to be 58. You know, I'm like, <laughs> I like to say that. But, and I have, be maybe because I started later, maybe because I had, I had a child at 19. I mean, I was young. And after that, I just go back to that giving birth thing. It's like, dude, I survived that. There is nothing I am afraid of right now. I'm good. Well, and to make a career for yourself <laughs> mm. where where your kids can see yeah, the fruits of your Yeah, and that was labor. the other thing. I wanted to be an example for her, which is why I was scared. And I was like, I can only be an example for one. But I was young and uh, by myself, and that's different, you know. So, um, but it's still the best thing that ever happened to me. I want to talk about the relationship of family and business. You know, the women's uh, role, the assumed role is is wife, mother, and I know uh, you're both married, you both have kids, um, but it's also to also run your career as well. Mm -hmm. And so how do you play with that dichotomy when you're, you are trying to run a household, but you're also still trying to be the best that you can be in your career? Priorities change, like we said, but how do you juggle uh, those two lives? You have to have a good partner. I was just gonna say that, I have my husband. Yeah. Um, I did a documentary called That Guy Who Was In That Thing, part two, called That Gal Who Was In That Thing. And if you watch That Guy Who Was In That Thing, it's all about the actors and it's all about the work. Mm -hmm. They're men. They, they go and, they, and it really talks about their character work. And when you talk to the women, Catherine Hicks, me, Paget Brewster, uh, Roma Mafia, really s incredible actresses, it was about our uteruses. How do we go to work, have children, and uh, have a husband and keep a marriage alive? And I oh. found that really kind of um, like, fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> they don't ask a man how he does no. that. No, they don't <laughs> ask a man how you keep your career how do you going do it? How while do you, do you yeah, have yeah. a wife and a, and, and a child. They don't ask that. But they're super interested in yeah. the mm -hmm. inner going ons of my uterus and how I keep my husband still married to me. And the bottom line is, and and listen, I'll, I'll, I'll go down with the ship. I am where I am today with three children and the career I have simply because of Anthony. Because I had a man who believed in me when my father believed in me. And when he died, I married a man who believed in me to tell me I could. And because I can, because he tells me I can, I do. So I think I'm, that's huge. I, and, and that's yeah. huge. So if I'm not there to make breakfast or to make dinner, and listen, I have been gone for, what, eight months out of this year. Yeah. He has done drop-off pickup, soccer drop-off pickup, basketball coach drop-off pickup, softball drop-off pickup. He's done it all so yeah. that I could be who I am meant to be. Well, And both your husbands are in entertainment as well. Yeah. And there's that energy, which sometimes works, sometimes it does not work. Sometimes mm. having somebody else. No, you else, gotta get that. Hey, yeah. listen, gotta I, be this is my third husband. <laughs> <laughs> third third time's a car, yeah. Third time's lucky. Girl, yeah. you're Latina. You're fine. <laughs> I did it. I, I have to say it's my You got one. lucky, I man. got lucky. Yeah. I got lucky. One's a char one's what, my husband says he's charm. his first. I he didn't get married yes. till anybody. You're Latina. Well, you so could have three husbands at the same time. It's fun. I need to get in on that. Somebody asked me that the other day. They're like, they're like Mormon thing? What about if you had more than one husband? I said, are you crazy? No, no, you can't. It's too you, many penises. Are you crazy? <laughs> I only want work. one penis <laughs> at a time work. and too the much bed. Work. <laughs> I have <laughs> never said that, by the way. I don't want my viewers to think I've ever said that. <laughs> it's too much work. I can't. No. Yeah. I can't. <laughs> um, I also want to
want to talk about, and I, because uh, we have a lot of uh, viewers from the entertainment community that are just starting out, uh, people that have just booked their first show on CW, also people that have been in the industry trying and trying to, to get their break, so to speak, on TV, being a series regular. Um, has body positivity really improved in Hollywood, or is that just smoke and mirrors that Hollywood says it is, but it's not? Um, there was some uh, article I read this last week that you literally have to be 12 to 14 pounds underweight to look like the weight you really are because of the curvature. With all of technology, how have they not created a lens that makes us look what we look like? I don't even, I had three children. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I, I, I had three kids. So, you go. So, uh, what, what, I don't even know what that means. No, but like the idea of body positivity, that women can be all shapes and sizes, and that you don't have to conform to being yes. like a size zero, a size two. I, I, think it's much, I think it's much better now oh, than it oh, was. Oh, okay. Now I'm, I'm picking up yeah. what you're, what you're saying. Down. Down. Yeah. I mean, no, look, yeah. you do not look like you've had three no, kids. No, no, I've had three kids. So you can no, tell girl, that very well. But in those general... Those pants, those pants no, should be I illegal. Know, I'm like, holy moly. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, good. <laughs> yeah. No, I can actually say in all of the shows that I've been on this past year, every all these lovely women have completely different figures. And even me. And they have figures. Yeah, I mean, we're not, you know, look at yeah. this ass. I've watched it grow on TV. <laughs> uh, and I am telling you, in the last 25, 30 years, it's, it's okay. Um, I'm also playing older parts now, but I think that I think it is changing. It's slow. It's like that little ant up the hill. So I'm not mm. saying that it's mm. like, oh, we can let down. Everything is happy now. Uh, but I think that because more more women are behind the camera than ever, because people like, mm -hmm. you know, because women in power demand that 80% of their crew be women now. Women. So that type of thing is shifting. And that I've seen in my long, you know, now I'm the old broad on set. So I've seen that change. Um, I don't like to say it too, tout, like too loudly because then people think like, okay, well now we don't need affirmative action and we don't need, no, 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 no. We're not there yet. But it's cracked. The bubble is cracked. And, and things are, light is, is seeping in. And as the more and more women that we get behind the camera, as directors, you know, in my 30 uh, years, yeah, I have seen that change point. where I show up and I'm like, oh, wow, there's a lot more people, women behind the camera. There's a lot more directors now when I work on a show that you get four or five women in a season. One woman was like a treat just 10 years ago, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, seriously, y y we've been to doing this, you know it. So now it's nice to see the difference. Young 24 year old. That are creators, and don't, don't, you know, don't take crap from anybody. Well, yeah. Well, I haven't been 24 for a while, but uh, well, <laughs> you're still looking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I look a lot younger than I am, so I've been taking that. <laughs> but I mean, it's. I think the bubble is cracked, and I think that this Me Too, Too movement has accelerated it in warp speed to use millennial term or Star Trek term or whatever the hell it is. It's it's well, you really were on Star Trek. Yeah, you go. So it has <laughs> moved it quicker. Um, and I'm okay with it. You know, I'm okay with it. You know, you mentioned Me, Me Too movement, and I mentioned it, uh, like, is it, is, it, is it happening globally? And I got this question actually from three males, which I found very interesting. And the question was, is what is your take on the Me Too movement? A lot of conversations lately have said it's become a witch hunt. And now you're, you're guilty until you're proven innocent, and it's lost people their careers. Do you have any personal stories regarding this? And do you think that it has outgrown its original mission? Hmm. Well, because I'm it's a loaded old, question. Because by the way. I'm the oldest one here, I'll start with yeah, sure. I can li give you a list of people that I can take up right now. But at some point in my life, and I'll just give you a one brief story when I was a young waitress that I needed my shift covered, and I knew that my guy or my guy the guy who's waitressing is the worst thing so god i think uber is better now but anyway the, it, the 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 food industry can be nasty to women but i knew that if i let a pair of breasts will get you a shift covered and all i have to do is have them look down or pull it down and i i probably am going to get a lot of feed or flack about this but i'm old enough to say this where it was like i need my shift covered anthony and i know that you're a slime bucket but I know that if I smile at you, I can do this. So. But I think we need this honesty okay. in talking about this. So, 
Do I now go and give a list of things? And the, one of these people, years later, got, not too long ago, but got bought up on charges and I got a call out of the blue. Oh my God. 15 years later about, they wanted to know that I worked for this person and if I would, I said no. And the only reason that I said no is because of this. Because when I was working with him, I got everything I needed from him to cover my shifts so I can be my actress. And he never touched me, and he never put an arm around me, and I never was alone in the office with him. But I got what I needed. And I'm sorry I'm old enough to say that I think a lot of women out there who are my age and older know that that's the way it was. Yeah. For the audacity of getting out of the kitchen, you had to deal with this shit. Now, it's gone to the other extreme, and I think it has a lot to do with also the way we deal with things. It's like you get a prize for showing up. You get, um, don't talk mm. to me badly or I can't do my job. Yeah, don't look at me in the eye. I Come need on. this fancy trailer to, yeah. yeah. So I, I, I am old enough to say this crap, and I will say it, that I'm like, you know, the only re is that guy, did that guy need to go to jail? Yes, and I'm sure that somebody, and then I'm sure he went to jail. But I got what I needed from him, and I am not gonna turn around and be like, ooh, me too. And that's an honest truth, and oh my God, I'm gonna get so much flash for this. Do you wanna jump in and help me? Uh, I'm drowning. No, I, 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 um, <laughs> I was actually called, my people were called by, I don't know, the New York Times or the New Yorker about a specific, uh, Person. P person. <laughs> uh, and I don't, with, with great respect to the women who, um, who, who, who were degraded and, and um, I don't call it hashtag me too. I call it hashtag get in line. Mm. I yeah. just didn't have it as bad That's as right. they did. That's right. Um, so I just call it hashtag get in line. It, th this is nothing new. If, if I had a fucking dime. For every, every time for every, somebody for did something time. to us or yeah. looked at then us. I would, or, but that was the price to do in business. For the audacity and of getting out of the kitchen. Exactly. And I was 19 when I started. When? I'm 51 now. So I've seen it all. Have I? I was never in, but again, for the grace of God, and Me too. maybe because I was married for a lot of it, I never put myself in a certain position. And I'm, I'm not saying that anybody deserved it, but I... I, I, I had my husband with me all the time. Yeah. I, it was like having a bat in the car. It yeah. just didn't happen. And, and, and you have to be, um, the problem with this saturation of it now is that there are people out there who are victims. Yes. And when See, it gets saturated, I, I think it, yes. and it, like for me to jump on the bandwagon to, I'm like, look, maybe he did touch somebody and maybe he, but then that's for that person. Mm -hmm. To that, that, yeah, fight it, that fight. Yeah, exactly. And, and, I didn't have and anything and to I don't, say. It didn't happen to me. Right, it didn't so happen So I me. can't jump on that bad wagon. Now, you know, yes, comments and all, it still happens. Just because we're me too, don't think it's not happening. It happens it all the time. It is still happening. I mean. And, it, and, and in some way, you know, we have to, you know, look, I'm an actor, so it starts to get into my comic routines, and, it's, and at some point we go, oh my God, guys. Stop it because what's happening is then it's like, oh, should I get political? It's like all the noise that Trump makes. And we don't really see the damage he's making to Medicare and all because everyone's like, oh, look at all the stuff he said now. And he's really doing a lot of damage. And we have to keep our eye on the prize. And that means sexually, um, politically, um, we just can't be distracted by the noise. This is very oh interesting. God. No, but I think it's a really Why honest did conversation. I get so dark? That I think <laughs> no, no, but but I think uh, coming from such hard workers with such positive attitudes like you ladies have, but it's a conversation that needs to be had because it's the reality of what's really going on. I have this fight a lot with the LGBT community. I have many members in the LGBT and TAM community that all they want to talk about is LGBT, LGBT. Which yes, that is a very important part. But I'm not just gay all day. Well, you put, you're putting yourself into that box already. I, I'm a business person. I'm a son. Uh, I have responsibilities as a friend. I, I need to do social media. I need to do so many other things. Mm -hmm. um, hate going to the gym. I like Bravo TV. It's not just <laughs> LGBT. Like, Who doesn't? I, right. Mm -hmm. Boom. I don't just sit here and be like super, super gay. 
there needs to be that at some point. But like you said, we need to focus on, on, on other things. And it's funny because your whole career, MTV, I think, was responsible for, uh, for a lot of the misogyny uh, because when it first started, it was half-naked women. And it was... I was in Lycra, gyrating on Colin yeah. Quinn's lap. Yeah. <laughs> That's how I got my start. When you have to sit on Colin Quinn's lap in Lycra. Oh, no. oh yes. <laughs> yeah. And, and so be it. I That's mean, right. Look where Colin <laughs> Quinn is now. I think he's at the subway. I think Cool. He has the... <laughs> One of the brightest, most incredible oh. men I've ever met. I know. Met. I'm always excited. Ever, I'm ever met, okay. yes. Um, okay, so let's lighten things up <laughs> just a bit, but I, I really thank you for, for being honest. And these are the roundtables that need to happen mm -hmm. with somebody who says, no, Me Too did happen to me because there is that reality there. Mm -hmm. um, we've all dealt with ups and downs in careers, whether you've had a character killed off, you were in Star Trek Voyager for the pilot, um, and uh, your scenes in 24 were like added to the DVD. There's so many changes. You never know what's actually... Oh, sorry. Okay, okay, you're telling me things I don't even know. <laughs> oh. Okay, yes, I Girl. was killed off in the Voyager. Yes, and I... Yeah, I don't, you that were was so long ago, the, the, the 24. So long ago. I don't even remember. But, but it's things that, that people talk about. Okay. Yeah, yeah. glad. Things people like that. Your, your scenes were, are on the okay. DVD extras, but not in that. So, but it's because you guys are so busy, I think, that you're just like, okay... Or maybe I just don't, I don't want to, I don't know. You okay. just move on to yeah, the next job. Yeah, you job. just move on so to the next job. You, know, that's you the move key. on How do you to deal the next job. And downs? Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes the phone is ringing off the hook that I can't do enough. Sometimes it's like, This woman has okay. three kids. I have an aging dad and a, t and, a, and a daughter who I'm trying to move out here from Los Angeles. I mean, we just don't focus on stuff like that. At least, I'm, I may be speaking for you, but this is what I do for a living. This is what I do for a living. So when it's slow, I take time to take my family and I focus on my life and I focus on, uh, I know and I trust my, my career at this point, we've been doing this long enough that we know we're gonna work and we trust our agents and we, and in the meantime, if I was so just focused on the <clears throat> lull of, oh my God, I haven't had an audition this week, you lose track of your life and your life is the only thing that you can color your work with. So it's important to me. <laughs> to keep my life active. Yes? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> no, I was thinking, yes, I was thinking about what you were saying. Yeah, um, I, I, listen, I've had a very long career. I was 19, uh -huh. 20 when this started. Oh, um, I've had, I've had my, my, my really high times and I've had my valley times and I, they've been bad. I mean, I've had some, some years that it was terrible. And some of the questions we got is, is how do you keep a positive attitude? How do you keep your passion for your, for your craft during those times? I don't, I don't think it's having a passion for your craft because I think at that point for me, I don't know that I had a passion for it. I think it was a, maybe I felt abandoned by it. Mm. Um, this thing that had gotten me through, this thing that I had put so much into all these years why is it no longer there? But it was never that, it, I was asking the wrong question. I didn't go away. I never went away during those valleys. It just maybe wasn't my time. So how do I keep that going? Well, I, I, was, I had children. I was quite creative. I had three daughters. Yeah, I mean, and I think that your life fills it. You yeah. have to let your life fill it up. Yeah. So yeah, you felt, uh, the, look, you know, you go through, oh my God, I haven't had, but, but at the end of the day, yeah. when you have, your children and you have a husband and you have a life and you have, then those things fill it up, right. fill up the void. And, right? and when perhaps the, 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 the projects weren't coming to me, I created my own, That's right. which is what was and between us. This yeah. is the biggest thing. And we're going to hear with our interview yes. with Nia Vardalos, the whole My Big Fat Greek Wedding was exactly that. Mm -hmm. That's right. Nobody would cast her. Her agent mm -hmm. manager dropped her, which you, you guys will hear in the interview coming up. Um, and so you had to make it. And I'm wondering, you know, the social media whole world, we, I, I just talk, I hate doing social media. I have to do it for an hour and a half each day because you have to do it on this platform and this platform oh, and tag and hashtag and all that. And, and you, you know exactly. And you don't even have an Instagram, girl. But no I wonder. to see that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I want to no, see every do. fabulous they event. They do, I guess. Yeah, but, you know, I, don't, do. I have terrible eyes. That's why I have glasses all the time. I always hashtag to the wrong thing. I'm useless. <laughs> I, I really should not. My daughter's yeah. like, babe, mom. Get off of social media completely. Just don't do it. <laughs> I wish I, yeah, I want to do that. Yeah, but it, it's now part of a career, but I'm wondering, mm. it's that instant reaction. Like like you guys just said, like 
you're in the career, you're in it to win it. It's this long thing. Sometimes it's going to work, sometimes not. Social media, if you post a picture and it doesn't get enough likes, and you're like, God, should I delete it? It's all this instant stuff that doesn't yeah. really matter I don't in the that, long right. run. I, right. don't, I don't see how many people like it. Or I don't, yeah. maybe, maybe that's the problem. I don't care. No, but I think that's what sustains you is because you're focused on your career and not just the immediate, like, okay. Well, that's, that's, listen, if I've been around, I'm 51 years old, if my career has been thriving for 30 years, almost 30 years, if I've been able to carve out a living, have three children, have a successful marriage for 20 years, we've been together for 22, I have created, uh, I mean, I've been on countless television shows, films, I wrote a book, that wasn't enough, I made a short out of that book, I, it's now on the festival circuit, I don't have time to hashtag so like hashtag That's kind of how I feel, or, or know, at least to look to see how many people liked it. That's yeah, for sure. I, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I, it's that's not relevant to me. What's relevant is the work that I'm doing. Unfortunately, what I'm putting out. I'll tell you one thing though, and I will tell you this: that I I would like to think because we are older school, that that it's really the work that happens. But for the example, this Chicano movie that you know Ben was in the room where they were trying to cast this film by people who had a lot of Twitter followers. So there are new it casting. When you check in, matter. you have to write your Instagram. And he, has to, and he had to fight. I would fail miserably. I would, fail miserably. Yeah. I would have I, to say, you ladies would on Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we, are, yes. we, would be, uh, we would fail miserably. Yes. But but But, but you look at credits, it's like, who cares? Because, like you said, it... I don't know. Her the, resume, right? My resume. It's like a roll of toilet paper. Yeah. No, but literally. That. Do you guys ever just sit back and be like, holy shit, you have done every major show, network and cable. Like, literally. Does, I mean, do you just sit back no. and enjoy that? No. no I, think, crazy I think sometimes I'll, I'll look and I'll be like, holy shit, I'm, I'm, I just feel old. <laughs> go down and go oh my god i got a lot of credits but it's not like i'm like checking my imdb number yeah, or how many people liked something that i post yeah. and unfortunately i'll be honest with you the only reason i have any of this is because of dallas they made me get an instagram and they made me get a twitter yeah. account but, <laughs> but i'm wondering like, if this is the key to success and you know like part of like new new productions, mm -hmm. it's all about that. I know. All the own crew. No are, like, one we're has ever asked me. No, me too. Thank God. No one has maybe ever we're, asked maybe me. Maybe it's like being vested in the union. Yeah, maybe it's like being vested. Me how like, many they Twitter don't ask followers yeah. I have. Yeah. At, at this point, actually, I'd like to get rid of all of it. Me too. Because yeah. it's it's a time suck, and it's just another way to to feel bad about. It's myself. a little creepy. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. The only thing that I have to say, and I, and I, I do get this from viewers, is. People love to see their celebrities on a whole different level. Like, I know uh, after the last time you were on the show, you, you started to bump up like you were showing some jewelry and you were showing some family moments. And it's that intimacy that fans are now craving over and above the shows that they're seeing. Right. But guess what? My daughter, my littlest, sh I'll take a picture. She says, Mama, don't post it. I don't want people knowing who I am. I don't want them to know. And I have to respect her. Hmm. My eldest, Mila, she yeah. does, I've now said her name. I used to post her playing her guitar. She doesn't, she's like, Mama, I don't want to be your daughter. I want to be me. Hmm. That is interesting. And, and I know that your daughter's an, an actress, too. Well, she's a producer, and I don't say that. She'll kill me. <laughs> <laughs> is, is there, because I know that you're a producer and actress. Is there this? Uh, she, um, she studied undergrad as acting and started acting and, you know, neighbors picked her up and, you know, her mom's an actor, so your daughter, if they wanted to act, it would be easier than it was well, for us. Uh. Um, and then at some point she had her first, like, heartbreak. And I always knew my daughter's a writer or producer. She's not, she doesn't have the skin that you need for the rejection of an actor. Well, um, and, uh, <laughs> and she got her first big, like, blow up, some big thing she lost, and she... Literally, I was working on Dallas. She called me up. I thought somebody had died. She was hysterical. And I was like, baby, what's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? And she's like, I lost this car. I'm like, I, and I was like, oh, my God. Okay. Okay. Nobody said. Okay. It's okay, baby. It's okay. It's not you, you know. And then she was like, I'm going back to school, Mom. I, I don't love this like you do. Wow. And she's soared ever since, which is fine. She, I've also been schlepping her around since she was 10. So she thought, oh. 
I'm an actor. I must be an actor. This is what my mother does. You bring her to the theater. Oh, she knew Philip. Rehearsals and notes and all that. Yeah, she played God at West Bank at the age of 10 because I was rehearsing. interesting? I just have to say this. I have to just say, because you knew Phil really, really well. So Phil and I had the same manager coming up. And when I think, and I, I said this to my husband the other day about social media, I always say to myself, when things this? happen, would Phil have done oh, this? Oh, fuck no. Exactly. And oh, that's my husband fuck said. no. Fuck no. <laughs> and you know what? We, that's we kind of how uh, I live my life. Oh, would no. Phil no. have done this? Because we came up no media, No media presence no. at all. No. He would have not. No. None. Mm. Exactly. We actually have a picture, of, a black and white picture of, of, of you and, 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 uh, Phil? And, and Phil. Through yeah. Labyrinth? Yeah, th- oh. through Labyrinth. Oh. It's there. Kurt, it's, 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 it's black and white. We're playing, um, I know what it is. I know what you're going to say. Yeah. Uh, it was <laughs> Queen Latina. Oh. Uh, w- and uh, we were the villains. W- we'll find it. We're like, Terrible. But it's funny because when he hit the scene, nobody talked about his weight. Nobody talked about anything else. But like, he's male. It would be different yeah. if it was a woman. Yeah. I mean, we still are. And his talent is his talent towering. surpassed um, everything. Anything. Anything. But you know what he used to love? And that's, I think, he used to say, um, you have to show the people your underbelly. Mm-hmm. Have to show people your ugly side, which I wouldn't want to do because it's and that was not something he pre-C-sessions. really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but oh, there it is, and girl, look at you, Marlene. I'm jealous of your outfit. Oh, baby. <laughs> Aww. Which is funny. Let them see your underbelly. We're told in this business, you know, and this is social media. Never let your underbelly show. Face tune everything, and And this is my best life. He was the different. You know, no, no. People are getting now. Look, you know, tucks because of. FaceTime. I'm like, oh my God, Phil is turning in his grave. Um, yeah, no, that's. So Charlotte, producer and actress, yeah. I know you've bounced back and forth. Mm-hmm. Um, and you've gone from producer, like, okay, I want to get back into acting. There's this like pull as to what you want to do. Hmm. Yeah. Um, so I guess I was, it would have been about 10 when I did my first school play. <gasps> and actually, oh. We actually have uh, we a have picture? a picture of you no. in one of your very very first Come plays. On. What is it, Kurt? It's in Charlotte's uh, pictures. It's a faded it. picture. It's a little older. It's going to be a uh, uh, up. There we go. Oh look my look goodness! Look. <laughs> that was my first play. So <laughs> okay. We do things right on the rocks. Okay. <laughs> so um, so that was actually the first play that I did. It was. Um, you were six years old. No, I was ten. ten. Oh, ten. ten. Okay. So I actually was, I was so disappointed because I was, I'm still short, but I was the shortest in my class. And so I was cast, this is the, uh, the play was called The Water Babies. So I was cast as a water baby because I was the shortest. So the three shortest in the class were The Water Babies. The Water Babies. I hear you And I was so (laughs) disappointed because I really wanted to be one of the policemen because they were funny and they got... It was the best part. I wanted to. They got all the laughs. They got all the laughs, and I was like, "All right." Be water baby. So I did. I did the show, and I was like, "I hate this," (laughs) and I was like, "No, not doing this." And then, um, yeah, I did other plays. My school actually um, did a huge production every year, and um, so that was actually the junior school. And then I got to senior school. We did a production of Jane Eyre, and I was again. One of the students. Jane Eyre in school? Yeah. That's a bit heavy. Yeah. <laughs> it's like Sweeney Todd in kindergarten. Let's do it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I was one of the pupils in the school. And we had this huge, after the production, this huge, like, calling for all, everyone who was in the production. And they were like, okay, we have something to tell you. We're like, oh my God, the costumes are ruined or something has gone wrong. And they're like, so anyone who was principal cast gets to go to America and do the production there. And again, I was so disappointed because I didn't get to go because I was one of the pupils. So that was the start of my acting career. It was very disappointing. Um, And so then, yeah, I did, um, yeah, all through um, through school, I I was in school productions. And then I went to university. I went to New Zealand, back home. I did a degree in theater and film. And I was like, I'm going to be an actor. This is great. And... After college, I graduated, I started my own production company, and to get the work, I had to go and find the work. So that led me to fall into producing. 
people would come to me with scripts and I'm like, great, can I be in it? Yeah. No, you but pin- I'll make it anyway. <laughs> so My ego's too big for that. I'll, yeah. I'll be like, yeah. Mm, yeah, so, I, so that's how I kind of started producing and then acting fell away because I was too busy running my company. Well, you only had two check. you said two checks earlier. Yeah. Script and people, you didn't put and apart from me. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, and I, st- I, st- I tried to do that, but there are some things where you're like, okay, so. Oh, yeah, please. <laughs> there's nothing really suitable for me, but I really yeah. like the project. Like so, the project? like, I produced a hip hop dance movie, and I'm like, okay, well, you know, I have three left for and there's no way that's dance. ever going to happen. Born to dance, yes. Born to dance. And so I was, I was producing and I was doing things and like going to see my friends. I was going to the theater three times a week, I was going to see movies three times a week. I'm going, I really need to be doing this still. So, yeah, I was like, all right, this is it. And I moved to LA to, to go to Stella Adler. And I was like, I'm going to graduate before I'm 30. I was 28 at the time. It was a four-year, two-year program. It's been eight years, and I'm about to graduate. But, <laughs> <laughs> but you've been working, girl. You've got I've been working. You've got yeah. Yeah. You've been busy. <laughs> so, yeah, so now I'm, I'm still, act- I still producing. But the acting thing was like, no, I really have to be doing this. This is what my passion is as well. So I, I, I do both. There's both sides of the cameras. I want to talk about behind uh, the camera. Um, Alicia, you shared with me uh, your short film, and I was so touched. Number one, I was touched that I got to see it, because it's hitting the festival circuit, and the fact that it was tied in uh, to the book I read, Gone Gracefully, or... Gracefully Gone. Gracefully Gone, uh, which, get it on Amazon. But I like Gone Gracefully, too. It works that both would, ways. That would yeah. be the way my father went, mm-hmm. yes. Yeah. Um, short film that uh, you wrote, directed, um, and there's like a guerrilla production behind it. Like yeah. you snuck into <laughs> one of the sets when they were closed and you yes. went was, over the fence. Bad, yeah. But you made this story work and you had people in the industry helping you out. Mm-hmm. Uh, you had neighbors helping you out. Mm-hmm. Your own family is literally in it. Um, and Marlene, I know you've been heavily in producing, directing, mm-hmm. um, and Charlotte, obviously, executive producing. The moment that you arrive on set in this in this title, the first time on set, what was that feeling like when you knew that you were a head honcho? Well, I can remember um, we shot between us. Uh, it was uh, the last, the middle weekend of October. And, um, no, I'm sorry, I'm lying. It was the first weekend of October, and I remember waking up on the Thursday morning and seeing my living room full of maybe $300,000 worth of camera Oh, my God. (laughs) Donated, by the way. Donated, because my husband is very good friends with Rufus, um, who who owns the camera division. And... um, He's just a huge fan to begin with, but he also, and the camera division has a huge, you know, female empowerment, and um, they're so supportive of female directors. So I had all this equipment, and my husband was like, you know, and we had nothing. We didn't have a penny to spare, and so he was, you know, getting uh, insurance for it. And so there I wake up at like 4 a.m., and I see... Even that in itself, it's like, who thinks of getting insurance for... You have to. No, no, you have to get insurance. <laughs> but, but here's the thing: like everybody thinks actors, that we're all like wealthy. Yes. We're not. We're not. <laughs> Ladies, I've seen your IMDb. Please. Uh-huh. No, that's but what that's everybody thinks. That's, you you that's gotta live thought. off of that. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody <laughs> thinks that we're all just. You raise you know, children off of exactly. that. You pay your mortgage off and, of that. Yes. And now with the age of all of the other entertainment available for free on YouTube, we have Netflix, we have Hulu, which it's you guys a, have done it's shows a, on. It's a different world out here yeah, right no, now. It is. Network TV you. money oh, is not the same. It is not. Nothing is the same. Like nothing is the same. So I'm sitting there and I wake up at like four or five in the morning and at six o'clock in the morning I see my cousins come in Mm -hmm. my neighbors come in my children are up I kept them out of school (laughs) and they're all there to do my 10 pages of a short that my husband talked me into doing because he believed in it so much 
and I baked lasagnas. I baked cookies. I had you fajitas. Had to feed them. Yeah, exactly. I had. I fed everybody. I. I love that fajitas is in that description. If you, you like, can't pay fajitas, them, you gotta pay. You, you gotta feed them. You gotta pay them. You gotta feed them. <laughs> and I and I just remember that morning waking up and looking in in my living room and my dining room with all of this equipment and my DP coming in and my sound person coming in, and going, they're all here, because. I wrote a book and I wasn't done telling my story and I needed to tell it in a different way. And my husband said, do that. Mm -hmm. Tell it in a different way. Just shoot it. And it would, oh, okay. <laughs> he said, go shoot it. Like, go freaking make dinner. I'm, you know, like, what? I and not that he would ever say that to me, but it was the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Go fucking shoot the thing. So I shot the thing. And I shot it, and my, my next-door neighbor, my dear friend Nancy Kerhofer, who is a huge post-production person, um, um, she was like, huh, well, um... I'm going to go, we've never, ever had a first-time director not have to do, like, pickup shots. So, you know, let's just go take it to the editor. He, she went to her editor, Jim Flynn, who did Gotti. I mean, he's amazing. He looked at all of it. We had a meeting. I told him what I, I wanted it to be controlled chaos. I wanted it to be absolute insanity of my morning. I wanted just to show my morning. And... He was like, okay, great, I got it. And then she took it to, to, um, uh, 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 to sound, and she took it to all these unbelievable people at Sony, Zami Asgar, sound, and everybody, and they just took it and did it for free, for nothing, because I, they believed in it. I have to tell you how seamless this was. When I watched it, it was uh, a morning. It was the energy, and it was it in real time. With the ups and downs of somebody doesn't want to get out of bed, you have to deal with personality. You have to deal with each kid on their own way. But then I also saw the exhaustion from you. Okay. I'm going to maintain. I'm the mom. And then missing your dad right. with that and having that energy. You guys, it was so palpable. And it was like an 11-minute film. It was a 10-minute film. Ten and what I wanted to show in it, um, because my book, Gracefully Gone, is about, um, it's a, it's a, Two journals, yeah. uh, my father's that he wrote from 1982 back to 1980 when he was diagnosed um, with brain cancer, and then mine from 1989 to when he died in 1990. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sorry, 1991. Um, and you were that young. I, yeah, that I fused together, and I wasn't done telling my story. Um, and so I showed, instead of doing play-by-play -play of the book that I wrote, I wanted to show my day, and I wanted to show what my life is, what I would like my life to be, and what I, this fantastical element of when I'm dealing with my 16-year-old who's coming out and having a really hard time coming out, and that in and of itself mm -hmm. is a whole other ball of wax, mm -hmm. dealing with an angry lesbian child. That's another movie. That's, yeah, that, <laughs> how do I? But I thought you handled it so masterfully because it was all these elements that make us live. Remember how we said we're, we're a lot of different things. We're not just one well, thing. No, thing. We're, no, we're right. not, and that's mm -hmm. what I wanted to show. I am not just one thing. My family, this life, it's everybody's life thing. is not just one thing. No. And when you think that you understand it all, that's that's the time when you got to go like have a vodka and go, okay, what's going to happen now? Because something else because will happen that you don't understand. Exactly. <laughs> so that's what I wanted to show in my film. And I wanted to show the idea of my dad, who is deceased, still being there for me. And not only helping me, but overlooking my whole entire family. Mm. Um, and my daughter, um, who, and I'm, hope she, I'm hoping she's not going to get upset with me, just recently came out. And what her life is like. That takes a lot of strength. So if you are watching, um, that takes a lot of strength. At, mm -hmm. at she came out at, what, honey, like fifth, at like 14 and a half. Um, and what, what our family went through for her to come to terms with being gay and us just going, can we have a peaceful meal now? Or mm -hmm. is that it? Are we done? That's, You're gay? Okay. That's what my mom did. Dominoes? When, when I came what's out. happening? 
pe- but they pe- have all of this not. behind, right? But they have all this emotion behind because they're yes. taught you're going to have a tumultuous yes. coming out. Yes. You're not going to be able to talk mm. to your family. And meanwhile, we're like, "What's hot? Can we eat? Yeah, because we're a little hungry." Right. I want to explore that because when when my daughter did come out to me, it was you know, she was like, well, "Are you upset?" For what? We still love you. For what? <laughs> exactly. Not we still love you. Just I'm like, what? what? what, what what's For going what? on? It's yeah, unconditional love. I, yeah, like, I'm like, and? I don't know. What, what do you want me to be upset about? Yeah, what, right? am I supposed to be upset? Am I supposed to be what? Am I you know? not supposed to love you anymore? Or because what? Something? that's that's what we're taught. Things things have changed a little bit, but that's. Um, so I wanted to tell her story too, and my film. You don't see her. You will never see her. Yeah, I, th- I thought that I'm was really funny. You will never the see her. The lucky charms and the hand out of the yes. bed. and you will never see her. Girl, I have been there. Yes, <laughs> until she comes out, because to see her before she does would be irrelevant. Mm, that's it would sounds be beautiful. Actually. I just there was a scene with the hoodie her. while you're dropping her yes. off at school, and she's like, "Okay, I'm yeah. gonna deal with this." She'll be in a hoodie for the whole thing. Because you have this whole other family to deal with. Mm-hmm. She has to go out and be on her own, and like be, a and, warrior, and, figure in, it out. and all this. What I really loved is how you handled uh, the loss of your father, because. Um, you know how we talked about life experiences. Being a mom changes things. Um, and Marlene, I, don't, I hope you don't mind no, me I sharing. No, I know. I'm going through that right now with my dad. These are losses, but we still have to show up to work. We still have <sighs> to do our part. I know. And then we have to keep the sides. Like, yeah, we got it going on. Yeah. When actual reality hits us in yeah. entertainment. Yeah. Uh, but the word entertainment is this, right? Yeah. And, but we have this. But we have real lives life. going on, mm-hmm. which is oh. actually what feeds every character that you see out there. So we have people that are dying, and they get sick, and they get people that are born, and people, and and people that come out, and people, and and then we have to go and shoot your scene. You have I, to go and be it. hair fabulous yeah. for Empire. I and actually you know? <laughs> miscarried twins on the set of Jericho. Oh, oh. no. Well, Jericho was full yeah. of stress. Yeah. Yeah, I was actually, yeah. And I, 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 I did not know that. Wow. Not, not, I said it here. And wow. and I remember going to, um, to, to Carol Barbie, who was my magnificent showrunner, and, um, because I had to say words to watch somebody lose a baby. And and she was like, and we're here for you. And I went to set and I didn't have to say those words and I was completely taken care of. Mm, um, that's nice. But you know what, you, you, you get up and you need to go to work. Mm-hmm. You go to work yeah. and all these things, um, they don't define us, but they inform but us. But they inform I, your I, work, I they, inform they inform you. Us. In the, every day, it's like, yeah. you know, you just bring what you have, right? That's all you can bring as an actor. Which, by the way, is what makes us different women from yeah. men. Because we can go to work and have that experience. Yeah. And we can go to work and have people say, well, what is it like being a woman and you have children and you have... Well, I feel if you're a woman that you show up to set and you're a little emotional, people are like, oh... She's PMS. She's a woman. She's an actress. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> Where guys yes. can destroy sets yeah, and curse yeah. people out. And it's like, oh, Christian Bale's having another uh, tantrum. Let's cast him in some more. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I can honestly say that I have seen women on sets having personal issues. And but we just keep and, working. And we just. That's, we have them, and we keep moving on. And do you want bacon <laughs> with your egg whites? <laughs> exactly. I mean, that's it. Exactly. Do you want, yeah. Um, and Marlene, being a producer as well, being behind the camera, on stage, you know, directing stage, there's this empowerment. And as Latina, like, you're supposed to be fiery, but you're also, like you said, you're supposed to know your place as well. Mm-hmm. Do you remember the first time that you had the reins in charge of everything? Well, I just directed my first short. I co-directed. It's a, a short called Familia. I did it with um, a very good friend of mine, Case Pena. She's a transgender woman, and she wrote it. And she's an amazing filmmaker that I've known for 10 years before her transition. And she came up to me and she said, I want to be an actress in this as a woman. Will you help me? She wrote it for herself. 
Uh, and we do some heft right there. Yeah. That's what you're like. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's and a I'll lot. tell you, when you were saying the, because I shot it at USC and it was interesting. I mean, I shot, you know, and it, when you wake up and you see all the equipment, and, you see, it's yeah. and you're just and like, there for you. holy shit, I didn't pay for any of yeah. this. No, <laughs> I mean, that's but they're all kind of like, amazing okay. to have that support. And they're all looking at you. And they're all looking at you, but I hired David Zayas, who was my best friend. And I, you know, so I die. I, you just surround yourself with familia. Yeah. And you surround yourself with your family that you can trust, and you just kind of dive in, and it's, um, it's amazing. I also think, as women, we do have to produce, and we do have yeah. to do our own thing because, and that's why I think it has shifted because we have taken the rein, and it's not something that just started, guys. Me too is, mm -hmm. is a tsunami that's been happening for, a decade. I think you when, know when it's it not the something that company, just then it was something. It just didn't show up. This is something that's been rumbling, and we realize that we need to see ourselves represented, and that we need to be writing, and we need, and that's why it's mm -hmm. happening. It's not something that just happened. I think we can. I mean, and not to take away from the Me Too, but to add to Me Too, I can do that. Exactly. So, like, me too. Mm -hmm. Me too. I'm going to be there. Me too. I can direct. Me too. I can, direct. I can write. Me too. I can, I can produce. Write. Me too. I can, yeah. I can start, direct, write. I can I do can all do of it. it. Me fucking too. Yeah. I love that. You guys are going to hear my interview with uh, Nia in, in a few minutes. Um, and she talks about having a DP that didn't support her mm. as a director, mm. also as a woman. Mm. Of course. Mm. But she thought, oh, it's an independent film. I've been given this first. I, I need to make this work. Mm -hmm. so her advice, which you guys are going to hear, is... No, you don't need to make work. If they're not working for you, then they are out. Fuck then they're out. Them. Yeah, that's right. Which is strong advice. Yeah. Um, and Charlotte, you know, you you produced a lot of stuff. Be mind the camera. Like, how, yeah. like how does that feel? Um, it's a little overwhelming. Um, the first thing I ever produced, like I started my company, and I was like, okay, so how do I get people to trust that I can do this? So we made a f we made a short film and got our friends together, wrote a script, tried to produce something, and you kind of just go, okay, I have to do this. And I think just throwing yourself in and trusting yourself, you, you kind of, you get people to trust you because they see you as in charge. So they're kind of like, okay, you're the one to go to. And so you kind of earn their trust that way. So it's, it's very interesting when, um, you know, you, you come onto a set and you have all these people and they have to do their job. You have to trust they can do their job as well. Mm -hmm. So I think that trust is a two-way thing. That's very interesting because yeah. I asked um, Vincent Angel, who is my, um, my daughter's godfather. He's also executive producer of The Rookie. And he's done so many things. And he came over and he watched Between Us. And I said, I don't know what I was doing. I have no idea what I'm doing. He goes, yes, you do. Because mm -hmm. you hired sensual. people. That's right who know more than you. Yeah, that's right. And you mm. let them and do you it. Trust them. And you let yeah. them do it. And you let them do it. And that is very, that's the most important thing, yeah. I think, that we've said tonight, is to trust people who know more than you. Yeah. You can and always learn. And that's okay learn. as a woman. to go Because men always think that maybe they know more. But as women, I think we're... Or it, we're or, it, or, it, or it challenges their masculinity right. for you not to know more. And women... I love them. Women, we, I think we're just like, oh, do you know We're more? like, you, you got it? You, you got, got this? Yeah. Can you help me with this? Yeah. Go, sister, go! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I got diapers to change and pushes to wipe. I've got dry cleaning and laundry. Yeah. So you got this? Yeah, I love how she went to laundry. laundry. She went to laundry. laundry. That's laundry. right. Shit that happens. Right. Yeah. Which I love why Anthony Hopkins, who we all... Mm -hmm. Revere and Adore, mm -hmm. who got into his career late in life, he says, you can learn on every set. We had Alex Ponovic, who he had a really integral scene, and that was Alex's first major film, and he kept telling Anthony, oh, God, you know, I, you're just an amazing actor. I, you know, I, I can't wait to learn from you. And Anthony's like, if you don't put me on the same level as you, this mm -hmm. is not going to yeah. work. It's not going to work. Yeah. Yes. And he says, I'm going to learn something from you. Okay, we have to end the show. Poor Kurt has to go home. You guys, uh, Nia Vardalos is coming up. Um, my interview with her was an expansion of what we talked about today, and she was she was everything that you would you would want her to be, and she had a little bite to her too. She she showed us some teeth. So we're gonna do rapid fire real fast, and then we're gonna tell our viewers where they can find you on social media. 
<laughs> well, well, I, I know. Okay, Why? rapid fire. Who wants to go first? I'll, I'll go, go first. Oh, you go first. You, you go first. first. Okay, I'll go first. Okay, Charlotte. Okay. A U.S. TV show that you would love to take back to New Zealand and reboot? Um, hmm, um, pass? <laughs> There's like, no ah, path in rapid ah, fire, girl. Come on, um, come on, think of something. Okay, so show I want to take back to New Zealand and reboot. Um, I'm really into things like the Goldbergs right now. So, oh, that's oh my god, that would be awesome. But I'm kind of doing that with my Australian. With the series. 80s, yeah. yeah, yeah. Legends, right? Legends, yeah. <coughs> okay, so you're okay. already doing that. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, biggest pet peeve while working as a producer on set from your crew um, or actors? Um, people who don't get things done on time. Oh, well. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a big thing. Yeah. Charlotte, your celebrity crush? George Clooney. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay, I'm okay. And, and actress? <laughs> Hashtag stand in line. <laughs> <laughs> he started doing coffee commercials and tequila commercials. I'm like, mm, okay. Mm? An actress you would die to film a scene with and don't see Meryl Streep? Helen Mirren. Oh, mm. yes. Oh, hands down. See, I say, what would Helen Mirren do? Yeah. <laughs> That's actually a good mantra. Because yeah. she has done That's everything. Right That's yes. right. <laughs> Charlotte, you can win an Academy Award for acting, an Emmy for writing, or a Golden Globe for producing. Which one is it? Academy Award for acting. Oh, okay. Nice. Girl. Charlotte, where, uh, tell our viewers and listeners where they can find you, which is not many places. Mm, I have a Facebook. You can type my name in. And I have a Twitter, which is official Charlar, C-H-A-R-L-A-R. Yes. And Larson is L-A-R-S-E-N. E-N, yes. All right, Charlotte, what a, what a pleasure. Thank and you. And I can't wait to see what you do in the U.S. You know, if you ever need a Husky Latino. Always. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't we always need exactly. a Husky Latino? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Alicia or Marlene, who's next? We're going in order of oldest to young, youngest to oldest, so that would okay. be you. Okay. <laughs> Alicia, happy birthday. Something that you did or would do as a young actor in your soap opera days that you're glad you don't do anymore. Uh, oh, S say it again. So something that you did or that you would do as a young actor on a regular basis that you're glad you don't do anymore as a more... Uh, Try. God, I'm going to clip that. And mm. it to try. I'm taking that. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, why try. I have to hear it again. Yeah. <laughs> it could be the name of your acting book, by the way, too. Yeah. It's called, uh, I just, very, very funny. I'll, I, I'll tell a story later. Yeah. Okay. It's called Just Do It. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a classic film that you would cast yourself as the male lead. The Fountainhead. Mm-hmm. Mm. I, that's very interesting. Biggest pet peeve while working on set from your crew, other actors, anybody on set? Complaining. Yes. I think that's from the younger crowd. Uh, worst audition that you still like? I can't believe I did that. Desperate Housewives. Really? What went wrong? Now we have to explain it a little bit. Mm. I know you're working with Mark Cherry. Well, which you're is working so for him yeah. now, so it wasn't that yeah. bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. No, she's like, no, I'm going to pass on that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, Wait, can I redo that? Yeah. No, not really? No. No, okay, we're, okay fine. Okay. But <laughs> now all of us are going to be like, what happened? Yeah, no, it is what it is. That's fine. <laughs> it well, happened. Is, is there a tip you can give to a young actress to not do? Try. There we go back to try. Got it. Kiss, Mary kill. Eric Braden, Skeet Ulrich, Nicolas Cage. Kiss, Skeet Ulrich. Oh, God in my dreams, yes. No. Oh, oh. Oh, oh Lord. Uh, no, kiss Eric Braden, marry Skeet Ulrich, kill Nick Cage. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's what Hollywood Variety said, too. No, just kidding. <laughs> Oh, my God. That's Alicia, tell our viewers where they can find you. And you have a website, too. Tell I don't have a website. Do I have a website? You have a WordPress. No, I don't do that. Well, it's still up. Well, I have nothing to do with that. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I'm so sorry. No, I, I'm <laughs> terrible at Go get your life media. together. Just, just, I'm going to get my life together. Don't worry about okay. me. No, but where yeah. can people find oh, you? Oh, okay. So um, my Twitter and my Instagram are both um, Alicia, then underscore Coppola. Yeah. And, yeah, that's it. Okay. <laughs> terrible. You guys are so funny. 
I love this panel so much tonight. I, I just it's so anti-Hollywood. That's making it in Hollywood. That's what I love. <laughs> Marlene, are you ready? Yeah, go ahead. Hit me. All right. Fear the Walking Dead. <clears throat> Someone in entertainment who has passed that you would love to have lunch with. Someone who has passed? Oh. In, in entertainment. It can't be like, oh, Gandhi, Mother Teresa, but... Hang on, it's going to be a pumpy ride. Betty Davis. You and her would tear things up, and you would talk <laughs> shit about Come every on, man. wouldn't we be best talk friends? Yes. Belts. Would we not be best friends? Totally I best have friends. her eyes. You guys would yes. have a reality <laughs> show. If she was still alive, you guys yeah. would have a reality show. And I'd that's, watch that. That's hands down. She has Betty Davis eyes. Oh, I have a story about Courtney Love and Betty Oh, God, oh, we're going to start talking. Sorry, Kurt has to go home to his wife. Uh, oh. We have to talk about Ooh, uh, Marlene Forte, your guilty pleasure. My guilty pleasure. And it could be towards anything. It's ice cream. Oh. And Alicia, it's. I know yeah. you too. Alicia's I heard like, I'm going to say diet, that. But I have ice cream. I was like, that gelato, that gelato thing cream. with coconut yep. and vanilla. It's pretty know. fancy. Sorry. Mine's just like, whatever ice cream comes out of the machine, I'll have it. <laughs> Marlene, <laughs> what is a male role from classic theater? That you would love to play. Play. Lear. Frankenstein. Oh. Frankenstein or Frankenstein's monster? No, Frankenstein. Hmm. <laughs> you challenged me, girl, and I love it. Something from the Latin culture that even you, being a power Latina, you are a Latina top, you know that, uh, that even that you shake your head at. It's like, oh, we do that as a Latino culture? Wait, so what's something that I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe we'd still do that? Yeah, or yeah. something that's like, oh, oh man, men being so macho. Yeah, because we know what they're really doing. I know. The more macho honest. you are, my papa. Mm. And you were on Mayans, which is the most machismo set. We're not going to go there. You were really good on it. Thank you. Okay. Uh, what would the name of your biography be? Seven years of therapy, four therapists later. I love it. <laughs> you guys, <laughs> this has been amazing. <laughs> Women in entertainment. You guys, don't leave now because uh, me and Nia Verdalo's hanging out. We might sing a show tune or two. Wow. We don't know. <laughs> Listen in. <laughs> Dear Sugar, my birth mother doesn't want to meet me. Dear Sugar, I lost my job. Dear Sugar, dear Sugar, dear Sugar, dear Sugar, dear Sugar. Dear Sugar, my question is about love. Dear Sugar, my birth mother doesn't want to meet me. Dear Sugar, I lost my job. Dear Sugar, dear Sugar, dear Sugar, dear Sugar, dear Sugar. Signed, confused, curious, stuck. Dear Sugars. Dear sugar, I need a little sugar in my coffee. <laughs> we are back. Canadian-born funny lady, Academy Award and Golden Globe nominee, Nia Vardalos has entertained us on stage, in film, and in print. Stage credits include Jenny and Company. We love that musical. An alumni of the second city in Chicago and Toronto. She even worked the box office, you guys. Her film writing acting credits include My, Fic uh, my Big Fat Greek Wedding, its sequel, Independent Spirit, and People's Choice Awards. Of course, Connie and Carla. Connie, Carla. Uh, and her directorial debut for, in for the independent feature, I Hate Valentine's Day, which I do. Uh, her film and television acting credits include My Life in Ruins, For a Good Time, Call, Graves, Jane the Virgin, uh, Law and Order, SVU, dun, 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 My Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, and more. Her memoir, Instant Mom, is a New York Times bestseller and all the proceeds are donated to adoption groups. You can currently see Nia, Nia recreate a role she originated, Sugar. I always have to say it that way, and it's probably not even pronounced that in the show, but Sugar. Uh, in Tiny Beautiful Things at the Pasadena Playhouse. Pasadena Playhouse is a gorgeous space, has been entertaining people on the stage for over 100 years. Tiny Beautiful Things is about Sugar, an anonymous online ad, uh, advice columnist to whom thousands of people have turned for words of wisdom, honesty, and hope. At first unsure of herself, Sugar finds a way to weave her own life experiences together with the deep yearning and real problems of her readers, creating a beloved column about the monstrous beauty, endless dark and glimmering light at the heart of being human. If that's not reason enough to go see the show, I don't know what is. She created the stage adaptation based on the New York Times bestseller of the same name by Cheryl Strait. And tonight's theme, we have been talking about women making waves in entertainment. I'm thrilled 
making her On the Rocks debut, the first woman that I've been excited for to, you know, get ready for a date. I even sh shaved my own sideburns today because I was so excited. Please welcome <laughs> Nia Verdalos. Hi. <laughs> Hi. I shaved my sideburns too. <laughs> Great. No, I was so nervous. I was like, oh, I don't have time for a haircut, you know? And then I was like, you know how you you do stupid things in the bathroom to yourself? And you're like, J -j -j I was like, yeah. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to have no hair. Yeah. Well. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, not us. No. Thank you so much. So, you know, we're pre-recording this because right now you actually are probably stepping on stage at, at Pasadena Playhouse. Yes, I'm not here. I'm a hologram. Yes. <laughs> we are so high tech around here. <laughs> um, I have to know, I have been such a fan of yours. I've seen everything that you've done, and I'm sure you've heard that a lot. But through your personal stories that you've shared through films, of course, Big Fat Greek Wedding, your book, and your really fun interviews that you can see all over YouTube, do people assume the kind of person that they're going to meet when they meet you, or even on set, when you walk on set, it's like, oh, it's Nia, it's fun, it's it's this. Uh, actually, I I get a lot of love, which is nice, like at Starbucks, you know, before I've brushed my teeth, nice. Oh, you know, people please. are very sweet. Um, but I normally get this. People will run up, like I'm their best friend, and say, oh, I love you, which is amazing. Yeah. And I go, thank you so much. And then they go, what's your name? Oh. It happens a lot. Really? Yes. Mm. Because they have a, a last name with a lot of vowels. So people give up. Yeah. They go, if they go, it's Nia, Nina, Mia, something, or V, something Greek. Well, and they give up. And your real name is uh, Antonia. Antonia Eugenia. Yeah. Oh. My, yeah. I was named after both grandmothers. Oh, and then my parents call me Nia so that neither grandma would stab the other. <laughs> <laughs> but you have such a positive attitude in all of your material. Do you ever just like want to be in a bad mood and be like, I don't want to be smiley. I don't want to be friendly. Like... How, how are you the most different than who we see on camera? I am the most different in this role on stage, not to segue to sell tickets, because it's selling out. Uh, but what I'm saying is I, I really took on this role because it was outside my comfort zone and super scary for me. Uh, as we were saying, I have these chipped nail polish things and this fake tattoo and all the, you know this one back here and it's so sexy it's so oh very sexy and they're so lifelike by the way yeah they're real they do a very very good job marie puts them on for me which is amazing at the theater and they last for about two weeks um but I, what i'm saying is that's the most different thing I, i've ever attempted was to play cheryl Strayed. tommy kale told me his direction was you are not doing an imitation of cheryl Strayed." that was really good for me to hear well, and Tony Award winner, uh, by the way, uh, Tony, um, reading the book and deciding that you want to uh, adapt it, it must have been pretty in important for you because everybody watches every new project that you have like, okay, what, what, what now after the huge success of, of your first like big film? Uh -huh. Does that weigh on you sometimes? It's like... <laughs> no. No? <laughs> because I'm like this. It's like, look, here's the thing. That happened and then you can just exhale. Yeah. Right? And then you can just do creative things. Like it's, people keep saying, are you afraid of being a one hit wonder? It's like, I had a hit. So, uh, <laughs> Yeah, and you're you like, know? look at my money I made. I'm <laughs> not <laughs> worried. I'm like, oh, I'm so depressed as I drive to the bank. What? <laughs> I'm, I, I got to do a, a movie about uh, Connie and Carla. I used all the white hot power that came at me and went, let's do a movie about drag queens. So I don't really worry about it. Then when I wrote my book, and, and yes, it became a New York Times bestseller, but I donated all the proceeds to charity. Right. You got to give back because if you're just trying to collect and amass successes all it adds up to is you're an empty shell of a very disheartened human and then you have no friends so it's not worth it well and that must put a roadblock to your creativity if you're always thinking i have to do the next big hit and i have to please all the audiences what were the things that they laughed at the most it takes you out you of your head of, of storytelling if that was what i was like i would have done my big fat creek wedding too immediately which is what they wanted but i didn't want i didn't have an idea until my daughter my real daughter started kindergarten yeah. and on that day um i was crying the loudest a lot greek mom and this woman went oh my god just listen in 13 years, they're going to go off to college. This is nothing. And I almost uh, killed her. <laughs> That's the next film by yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was like, how dare you um, speak this truth to me that one day my daughter would leave me? Yeah. And that's when I realized, oh, we morph into our parents. I had become the parents from my Big Fat Greek Wedding. Ah, there's my sequel. So if the answer, why did it take me 13 years? I didn't have an idea. You can't force creativity. It's like it's like trying to have sex when you don't want to. <laughs> Please, I'm from West Hollywood. We all know about that. It's like, not tonight, honey. I have a headache. <laughs> uh, our theme for tonight's show uh, has been women in entertainment. 
Big Fat Greek Wedding was a real like roll up your sleeves and get it done yeah. movie. Um, you had some support, but really at that time it was wildly popular years before our current trends right now. We're talking about body positivity, uh, ethnic diversity, uh, gender equality. These are stuff we're talking about now. Um, whether Hollywood is being sincere and its discussions about them, who knows. But this was so before any of that. Yeah. What kind of Hollywood struggles did you have in getting the film made? Well, I had a struggle in that it was not about a Hispanic family and it wasn't about a, an Asian family, visible minorities. It was about a, a family that no one really knew what to do with. Nobody knew, like, about a Greek, Greek family. They what were, did they do with an opa and crash yeah. dishes? Like. Yeah, and I was having trouble getting acting work. My agent told me, get ready. <laughs> Yeah. She told me I wasn't pretty enough to be a leading lady <laughs> and not fat enough to be a character actress. Like, oh, what? See, and I would have <laughs> taken that as a challenge to be like, you want to see me eat? Come I, on. I could be fat <laughs> by this afternoon. <laughs> yeah. And I, I remember being so sad for her that she had marginalized herself in that she herself was judging another woman's ability to be cast simply by... Uh, societal pressures that had come on her. Yes. So um, I left with love, drove home, it's swearing at her, you know, in my car, and then realized if the problem is that I'm Greek, because she said, you're Greek, you're not this, you're not that, you're not this, you're not that, you're not pretty enough, you're not fat enough, you're just in between, and I can't get you work. And I thought, well, if she can't get me work, I'm not going to wait for the phone to ring, I'm going to call myself. So I had gotten married a year earlier, and I took every story that has ever happened to me in my entire life. My Aunt Bula, who had a lump on the back of her neck that she claimed was her twin. Uh, my dad putting Windex on our pimples to get rid of them. All those things. Yeah. I, um, I just wrote them down in a list, and I borrowed a friend's computer, and I wrote the screenplay. I just, I went, I didn't go out, I didn't tell anybody, I just sat down and I wrote what I hoped, I was so naive, I was like, maybe I can play a bridesmaid. <laughs> and then um, my agents, of course, had dumped me, I didn't have any representation, I was doing voiceover, so I had a lawyer, who's my lawyer to this day, John Moonves. You did Star Wars, by the way, you still have a lot of fans. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it was like, you know, it was really an experience of getting um, the bills paid by doing voiceover, yeah. and plus I'm a, pro I'm a professional florist. I thought I could waiter again or bartend. I was not worried about making a living because coal mining's hard. You know, just <laughs> if you're here trying to be an actor, that's a luxury. That well, coal mining those outfits. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's hot, <laughs> but I bet they're skinny. <laughs> uh, very slimming, and like because you have all the soot, and black is very slim. <laughs> Looks good. <laughs> red carpet ready. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I wrote the movie. Couldn't get it read by anyone because I didn't have an uncle who ran a studio. Yep. So I saw Julia Sweeney show, and uh. God said ha, and I went ha ha. So I jumped on stage and started performing the material from the screenplay as a one-person show. So the screenplay came first. The one-person show came second. Rita Wilson came to the show. She's of Greek descent, as you know. She yeah. said this should be a movie. We always joke that I handed her the screenplay so fast her hair flew back. <laughs> That's she, how you have to do it, though. Don't yeah. let her rest. Exactly. Yeah. And <clears throat> then Tom Hanks and his partner Gary Getzman came to the very next shows, and that was it. Then they called me and said, we're going to make this into a movie, and suddenly I was playing the bride. I mean, all parts of it are kind of crazy, except here's the lesson. Do the work. I wrote the screenplay. If they had come and said this should be a movie, and then a year later I went, hey, you remember that show yeah. you saw in Hollywood? The fact that I had done the work is the lesson to myself. So to this day, whenever I'm not sure about what I'm supposed to be doing, I write. I just stay quiet and I just write something, and maybe it'll get made and maybe it won't. But it makes me be a better writer and a better person. <laughs> Well, I have to tell you, there's a sincerity in, in actual storytelling. You know, uh, we were talking before the show about everything is a reboot of a reboot of a reboot. Yes. Where are the original ideas? And as an audience, I don't like going to the movies anymore because I'm seeing these stories that have been rehashed and I know what's going to happen. I'm not excited. Yeah. But when I see somebody's actual story or a sincerity in a story that they're telling, yeah. it's a whole different type of movie. It doesn't need the CGI. It doesn't need A-list actors across the board. Yeah. It's a different experience and I think Hollywood is kind of missing out on that. I agree. I mean, what we were an indie film because no studio. They did. I found out later. Sorry. I found out that the, um, the company... Tom Hanks and Gary Gitzman's company, Playtown, had sent the script out, and studios had said, love the script, lose the girl. Like, there was no way they were going to let me star in it. Everyone protected me. Rita Wilson never wow. told me that, which is very sweet, yeah. right? 
I only found it out way later, but they were like, well, we want to keep the girl. So they found independent financing and we made the movie. <laughs> so there has to be that moment that after everything, you're like, hmm, hmm. Like, everybody no, that said I'm, no. No, is... I'm a middle child Canadian. I would never go, ha, ha. I just don't. I just go, thank you. Well, I'm doing it for you. Ha, ha. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it actually helps me, too. If I think something is weird and different, I don't try to conform it to something that I know will sell. Because then it's creatively dead. Yeah. you got to do weird stuff. And that's why, hey, maybe I would own my own island by now if I kept doing the Greek wedding movies. But I would be creatively dead. So I did these indie films that maybe they weren't ever as successful. But this is why I can talk to you without a tick. <laughs> and why I have friends. You have a soldier sold to the devil, and so to speak. family, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, now, talk to me. Uh, we have a lot of entertainment people that watch the show. Talk to me about some of the peaks and you know you hit the scene with such a high peak. Yeah. Um, then it became a TV series that didn't do so well. Some of the projects that you've done, you know, were a, were a big hit and critically uh, received very well. But there's always those uh, peaks and, and valleys in a career. And how do you mentally get through yeah. some of the times where it's like you don't get the news that you that, that you want? You absolutely have to remember that no one's opinion matters but your own. You have to remember this. I'm going to tell you something that no one remembers. My Big Fat Greek Wedding got terrible reviews and good I reviews. Remember, I remember terrible. I Variety, said, Variety said I didn't have the looks to be a leading lady. And then I got nominated for an Academy Award for a screenplay that people said was the worst screenplay they'd ever seen. And it went on and on and on. Then I got nominated for a Golden Globe. And then I won the Independent Spirit Award and the People's Choice Award. Which time was I happiest in the whole process? When I got that phone call and they said, we're going to make your movie. You can't find personal happiness from a form of success that has been told to you from other people. Otherwise, you're just searching, yearning, or, or you're creating, will this sell, will this sell? Can't do that. You just got to keep doing what you do. The TV show was sold before the movie came out, and I was contractually obligated to do that. I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> And you know, you mentioned that quote about Variety is saying about about your first film and about you personally. And you know, they've they've had this whole diversity movement. Um, and even one of my friend actors was was highlighted in there. It's interesting how the media kind of changes. I mean, because that's pretty vicious, you know, to say to see who's still. I've, yeah. I've read it about Tina Fey. I've read about Melissa McCarthy. Somebody said a female said Tina Fey shouldn't be in film. She doesn't know how to walk. Let me ask you something. Would you ever say that about Will Ferrell? No. no. But we're so hard on women. Yeah. In fact, I, because I go to all my test screenings, it's like being at your own funeral. And you read and you hear what they say about your film, which is excellent advice because if you are not sure if a connective mm -hmm. thread was there, you go stitch it in, etc. There's a lot that stays on the cutting room floor. It's good. It informs your process. But if you don't have a tough skin, it's, it's shocking. But what I've learned is how hard women are on other women. And that's my goal constantly, constantly. Like when anything happens and if somebody goes, wow, all right, I go, isn't that great? Isn't she wonderful? She works so hard for it. Like stop, we have to stop. We have to stop. I love that. I, I really, really love that. And you know, uh, like other actors on the show have said is, it's not really competition because there's, there's work out there for everybody and nobody can do exactly what you do. There isn't a finite amount of success or work. It lays in piles at your feet. When success comes your way, it is your duty and your job to share it. So, I wrote Lainey Kazan as the lead of my Big Fat Greek Wedding too. We have Lainey on the show. Exactly. When is a 70-year-old woman going to get to wear a wedding dress? When I write yeah. it. <laughs> that was fun for me. I, w with this ensemble piece with Tiny Beautiful Things, we cast to reflect the current population. Mm -hmm. We did not worry about who's the most can I say it? Yeah. And then, who's the most fuckable? We didn't worry because that is ridiculous. And that is how people are casting things and they're failing because what's working right now? Stranger Things. Stranger Things, those kids look like us. And that's why we love that show. Yes. Good storytelling is good storytelling is good storytelling. Yeah. Especially at that time when I was that age in Stranger Things, girl, I, I, I looked a little a little odd. Oh, for sure. <laughs> I had bangs, glasses. Not that I'm hot now. I mean, but oh, I was hot, by the way. a mess. It took me 17 hours to look like this. And, <laughs> same. And, yeah, same, right? Everything's held in with a series of gears and pulleys. 
<laughs> CGI folks. <laughs> For sure. But yeah, I, and no one looks like that. And I know I've stood right beside these people on the red carpet. What I absolutely hate is the movement to call women of color or women in general who do not fit a size two to call us real women. Because that woman who's a size two is also a real woman. We're all real women. Mm -hmm. And we cannot marginalize one type of woman to embrace another. Just embrace us all. Yeah. <sighs> Well, speaking of being a powerhouse as a woman in entertainment, your first directorial, um, uh, I Hate Valentine's Day, what was it like the first day on set knowing that this is my vehicle, I'm, I'm calling the shots? What was it like the very first moment that you were doing your, your very first scene? I should have quit. Um, <laughs> because what happened is we started the budget. I think I was offered a $1.9 million budget to make a very small film. Mm -hmm. And I said, yes, I wanted to do it. They said, we'll give you the budget to direct if you start it with John Corbett. Okay, John and I love each other. Yes. Well, on that day, the, we didn't have a DP. Our, D, our director of photography quit. Um, we got hit with New York fringes. So half my budget went into this and this and this. All of a sudden, I had nothing, nothing, no money to make a movie. But I looked around. There were hundreds of people that I had employed by simply sitting in my little office and writing Fade In. And I didn't have the heart to just walk out, but I should have. That's what I've since learned. If things aren't going well, just say, this is not what you promised me. I can't put my name on this. Wow. Now, the movie made money. I, the guy, the DP who flipped out and kept saying, I can't do this. I had just become a mom. My daughter was almost three years old. She had brand new parents when we met her, and she was the bravest person I know. And I thought, this kid's walking around in a diaper sucking a bottle and is braver than this baby? Yeah. And I would just link my arm through his and go, walk with me. I will fire you. If you do yes. not stop this, you have to stop talking to me like that on the set, and you have to get through this movie, or you're gone. Oh, yeah, I can do it. I can do it. I talk to my therapist. Yeah, I can do it. <laughs> it's like, Welcome to Hollywood. Uh, but I should have. I should not have let him DP one minute um, after he started saying, I can't do this. If you can't spot the obstructionist on your set, y y keep looking. Keep looking, because there is always a naysayer. There is always someone who is not told you can do this. For, by their inner voice, by their mother, by their theater teacher, by the, the manager at McDonald's who said, run that fryer. I've never run it. You can do this. Run it! You know, you yeah. have to remember that there are people who are obstructionists and don't want success. Get them off your set. And that's what I should have done that day. But we had a good time, and then we made money. <laughs> that's pretty, you know, drastic. What I see, you know, everybody says, you know, believe in yourself and believe in your dreams, which is, you know, which is, which is a great message. But like, that's a real piece of advice. It's like black and white. This yeah. is exactly what you should do. Yeah, you should really say, look. Guess yourself. Yeah. If you can't spot the person that everyone's talking about on set, it's you. That's my other piece of advice. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Sorry, Kurt. <laughs> um, earlier this evening, we talked about the assumed role uh, of women in society from, from being a wife, being a mother, taking care of the home. Um, but in relation to roles behind the camera, in front of the camera, how do you play? And you were very open uh, through your column with the Huffington Post uh, about you know becoming uh, a, a mother. How did you play with that dichotomy of your role as a mother, role in your career, and, and how do you meld that today? Uh, well, I used to be able to write until the writing stopped. I used to be able to just sit down, make a sandwich, write for you know 17 hours yeah, until yeah, yeah. it came to me. Well, now my time is much more different. And I applaud the Pasadena Playhouse because when Danny F Feldman, I'll say it again, when Danny Feldman, yes. give his name the credit he is due, asked me to come and do the play, um, I said, here's the deal, I can't do matinees because I'm working. Mm -hmm. I have another film and a TV series that I'm working on. And also my daughter needs me. Yeah. So um, I said, I can't do matinees and can I split the role with someone, which would be amazing to get to hire somebody. Right. Uh, it's the, 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 the moment of giving somebody a job is the greatest thing. I love it, love it, love it. I know now why Tom Hanks, Rita Wilson, and Gary Getzman made all my dreams come true because it's fun. <laughs> it's really fun. <laughs> so um, I split the role. I write. I get up very early in the morning, 4 o'clock a.m. Girl. Yeah. I'm going to bed at 4. <laughs> yeah. I used to be that girl. Yeah. Yeah. Right now during the play, I am not getting up to write because I owe the production yeah. my time and my focus. But when I'm not doing a play at 8 p.m., I get up at 4, I write for about two hours, I get my daughter up, breakfast, piano practice, get to school, then workout class, write. Gotta write. Write until it stops. Which sucks because 
as I said, you can't force creativity, mm -hmm. but some days I think I have to meet this deadline. I'm very fiscally responsible yeah. and I'm never going to disappoint a studio. But um, th it's different. It's different when you're a parent. You have to get it done. Well, and I'm sure priorities switch too. You yeah. Know, if a kid's sick, that's priority. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, I love that, sh that you've shared your life story with us on, on so many different levels. Um, you're doing the show on a different coast. Yeah. Tiny beautiful things. Different coast, different audiences. Yeah, let me um, take this off because it is hot in here. It is. We it's are my in LA. Heat, Mia. Woo, woo. Oh, okay, we're good. We're good. How's um, it flashing? Okay. And some of the original cast, by the way. Um, how is this production different than what was seen on stage at the Public Theater? Um, this direction is uh, from Thomas Kale's direction at the Public Theater. His associate, Sherry Eden Barber, came here and directed us. It is Tommy Kale's footprint. Mm -hmm. There are two ways of doing the play. As you know, there are about 15 production, maybe 25, mm -hmm. of Tiny Beautiful Things right. going up all over the United States right now and through the next two years. They licensed the play, and in the playwright's notes, <laughs> playwright, I wrote, um, please do what you want with this production, because I believe art is to be interpreted. Interesting. So all, the only thing I ask is to please uh, cast indicative of the population, mm -hmm. so that we're not just seeing a lily white cast up there. Yeah. Nothing against white people, but let's have some other people too. Right, you know? right. Um, Amen. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so... Um, uh, wait, what was your question? I forgot. Uh, oh, how, how is the show different than different. what we saw? Yeah. Okay, so we have the original production, came to the Pasadena Playhouse. We have Natalie Wil Willems Torres. I keep going on that on there. I want to get people's names right so badly that I'm getting them wrong. Natalie Willems Torres, who is my sister from another mister. She's yeah. this the greatest. She's been with us since the first production. She informed my writing of the piece because when I saw how funny she was and how poignant she could be, I changed things and started to write to her strengths. Mm. She knocks it out of the park comedically. On stage, she is the sassy wench who tells me off, and a moment later, she plays my mother. So she's incredible. We have Teddy Canyas, who also is my online troll, because in adapting the book, I realized, I was like, there's no troll. Yeah. Of course, if you're online, there's a troll. But Always. I, yeah, I asked Cheryl Strait, and because it was on a literary rumpus, there wasn't a troll, and I was like, we're having a troll. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. he is really a hostile and pokes, you know, presses my buttons as this very funny online troll, uh, really annoying Cheryl Strayed on stage. And then um, at the end of the piece, he guts us, uh, fillets us like a fish. Um, uh, just open on a griddle um, with his performance as a grieving dad. We have a new cast member because our cast member Hubert got work in New York. He's going to be in the public's production. So we have a new cast member, Giovanni Adams, and we have Samira Luckman Hare. Uh, let me talk to you about Giovanni. Oh, Giovanni slays us with, he's funny, and then he absolutely takes us to the ground with his discussion about an abusive father, mm. a narcissist father. Samira Lokman Harris splits the role of sugar with me. She is gentle and sweet and fierce and poignant. She's amazing. We have Sarah Hollis and we also have Adam Smith and they are also, we say we are all sugar. We don't use the word understudy in our production. We are all in the cast. Today some of us speak and on other days others of us speak, but we are all sugar. You can tell. I've seen I've seen the rehearsal photos on Instagram and on the PasadenaPlayhouse.org website. Um, I've seen uh, the, the production photos. There's a palpable chemistry that I see from you guys uh, as cast and crew. Yes, um, and it, it's it's pretty exciting. And to have you at Pasadena Playhouse um, in such a different role for you. Yeah, it's um, really different. <laughs> what a great treat for for audiences. Uh -huh. Um, going from the fast-paced environment of filmmaking to going through a stage production where there are the rehearsals, there's the run-throughs, yeah. there's the notes, there's the preparing, there's the doing the show over and over again. That's a whole different energy than on film. How, as an actress, do you adapt that kind of energy? Well, with film, you always wish you had another take. Right. And as a writer, whenever I try and craft the perfect sentence and then... The actor says it, and I can see she wants another take on the film set, but you got to move on, and I, I empathize so much. I understand that. Well, with theater, you get another take, and another one, and another one. Tommy Kale's direction to us was so poignant and perfect, and this is what Sherry Eden Barber said to us in her direction. You make the soup once at a time. Today, you've, you're following a recipe given to you by your grandmother. Well, tomorrow, if you make that soup, it's a new soup. Mm -hmm. and 
on and on and on. So I, I say I make a cake because I like sugar. <laughs> <laughs> sugar, sugar. And I have to say sugar every time that way. It's so weird. <laughs> um, this always fascinate, fascinates me. 30 minutes before curtain goes up, what is it that you are doing backstage? Oh, that's fun. I okay. love this question. Um, 30 minutes backstage, we, um, well, in New York, we got to share a dressing room, and the Pasadena Playhouse is big, and we yeah. all have our own space, Huge. and we hate it. So we're just in Hello. each other's rooms, you know. Natalie and I always have a ritual. We look in the mirror and make sure neither one of us is wearing too much makeup, because we can feel Tommy Kale in New York going, get that makeup off! <laughs> <laughs> so we compare eyebrows to make sure neither one of us is married too much, etc. Um, we talk, we laugh, we eat. A lot. Really? We eat before, our feelings. Uh, oh yeah, snacks and food. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We really uh, we drink some warm tea, a lot of water. I drink so much water you before feel I go on stage. I'd be like, Whoa. oh, I know. I have a catheter in. <laughs> That's a whole other movie. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine if that was true? I and I just said it. It'd be like. Uh, oh, like, oh TMZ, <laughs> are you listening? <laughs> um, being so involved in the adaptation and used to being also behind the camera in the creation, working with the director, I know you've said some really nice things about working with, with both directors. Um, there has to be that moment, though, where you must have to step back as the actress and be like, okay, I trust enough, even though you're so used to working yes. it out. I actually have a ritual that I do. Uh, Peter saw it. Oh, I'm pointing at You can't see him. There's someone off camera. Oh, but he's fabulous, by the way. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, I have a ritual before every production because I am usually the writer. Um, and I hand the script uh, figuratively, literally, to the director and say, you're in charge because there can only be one Helmer on the yeah. set, mm -hmm. um, anywhere. And so, of course, it's always a collaboration. But this way, in on film sets, if I'm in the makeup trailer, and someone asks me, what did you mean when Aunt Bula says, I go, come on, let's go talk to, and we go talk to the director. Because that gives them the right to question a line and to need uh, a third party who can fix it, and then they can come to me, and I'll fix anything if it doesn't feel right. On Big Fat Greek Wedding Movies, they know their characters. Yeah. They know them. So if them, something doesn't feel authentic, I'm listening. I'm listening to how can I help? How can I make it feel? Lainey Kazan had a question about her scene where she's questioning, should I ever have gotten married in mm -hmm. Big Fat Greek Wedding 2? Yeah. And I, I, I loved that input, and I went to my mom and said, okay, let's talk traditional Greek woman. Let's talk about, did you ever doubt getting married? And all these things came out and they informed my writing again. I love talking to you. I could talk with you for hours. I wish there was a few bottles of wine though, because I think I we'd have some like real good talks. I hate that I can't <laughs> drink before the show. No. Um, real fast, my gays would never forgive me if we don't talk about Connie and Carla. Um, an amazing film. We got to see the musical side of you. Uh -huh. to, to hear you sing and to see you dance was magical. <laughs> that whole movie was magical from start to finish. Some of the one-liners that are still said in West Hollywood to this day. Of course, uh, the late Debbie Reynolds being part of it. Uh, your chemistry with Tony Collette, and you guys share like the same first real name, right? That's right, yeah. Antonia, yeah. How did you guys build the chemistry so uh, so quickly on, on that set? Well, that had three weeks of rehearsal. And so we, it was probably rehearsed like a play. We yeah. had dance rehearsal, we had singing rehearsal, we had harmonizing rehearsal. We had so much time. And so that's how we built that chemistry, time. Time and trust, you know, you kind of just trust each okay. other. But like, it takes time. I mean, and time is money. Yeah. So sometimes you don't get that on films, and no. sometimes it's it's evident. I was ready for Connie and Carla, twelve sequels, the prequel, the graphic novel. Like, we need some more Connie and Carla. I agree. <laughs> and when you say my gaze, by the way, my gaze too. Oh, God girl, bless. I know. God bless. Everybody was so excited. I'm like, I get to meet her. Oh my God. <laughs> there is there is nothing more fun than when I went to Rage. I was telling you off camera. Yeah. We, I went to Rage and saw. These amazing actors performing all these songs from music yeah. musicals that we love, and to see them do Connie and Carla just slayed me. I jumped up. Yeah, I was like, oh, I got to get up with these. They must people. have wet their pants. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're gonna play a little rapid fire before you go, and we're gonna let you get ready for okay. the show tonight, which sweating. you are doing right now. It's it is very hot sweaty. in here. Kurt, okay. Will you snap a few pictures for our Twitter, Instagram? Uh, okay, entertainer that has passed that you would love to have lunch with. Oh, uh, Mary Tyler Moore. Oh, interesting. I've never had that response. Yeah. Yeah. Talk yeah. about talk She's about pretty a, great. A trailblazer strong, for me. Yeah. 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 I can yeah. totally imagine. Uh, most embarrassing song on your playlist? Oh, um, Enya. I work out to her. <laughs> 
is so weird. I, I do that one remix where it's like, say it away, but it's like a little electronic. I do that. Not that I go to the gym and <laughs> cardio, but so. Uh, your biggest pet peeve? Uh, liars. Oh, okay, good. Mm -hmm. uh, celebrity crush, and don't say John Corbett. <laughs> oh, celebrity crush, Bette Midler. Oh, yes! <laughs> oh, my God, Connie and Carla, two. Three. There's three of them? Yeah, yeah, I oh, know. Love there it. Be three of them? Right, write it down, Peter. <laughs> uh, you are directing the reboot of a musical that's going to be a film. Which musical is it? Company. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. got to be, right? Well, you know, Patti LuPone, eat it things up. Uh -huh. Uh, I would do a non-binary version of, of company. I would have all different genders playing yeah. all the different roles. I think it's something that needs to be explored. I think we don't have enough. Love, Simon. M my daughter's generation, they're 13. They went to that yeah. movie multiple times. Greg Berlanti. There's, just like there was a market for a Greek film, there is a market for this film. They do. They are so open and loving. Sure, we live on the coast. I'm sure they're like that in New York, too. But I think all over, all over the states and all over the world, I think people are much more open and accepting. So let's do that version of company. Let's do it. Steven Sondheim, are you, are you listening? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, chins up, boobs out, it's showtime. Yes. <laughs> you can yeah. the theater. <laughs> Go see Tiny Beautiful Things at Pasadena Playhouse now through May 5th. Very limited. Tickets are going like hotcakes, so you got to go. Their opening night was unbelievable with every star under the stars. Uh, and Reese Witherspoon was all excited. She was like Instagramming her program. Oh my God, that was amazing. Oh. We, sh Reese Witherspoon and I have both played Cheryl Strayed. Oh, how funny. And we got to take a picture with oh, together so awesome. of that. Isn't that great? Yes. Yeah. There's another movie in there, too. Uh, <laughs> go to PasadenaPlayhouse.org. If you haven't been to Pasadena Playhouse, you are missing out. It's a beautiful venue with so much history. Of course, uh, this beautiful show with a great cast and a great opportunity to see Nia uh, uh, on stage mm -hmm. and, and personal. Um, Go see it. Even fly into Southern California. Go see it. Is there a movie version? There might works? be, yeah. I like your thing. Let me come over here. Yeah. I like your thing. Let's see. Where are we? How's your thing? Oh! Oh, oh my God, we're so okay, cute. Okay, I just want to point this out. We look related. Oh, my God. <laughs> Why can't we have Connie, Carla, Connie, Bette Carla. Midler. Yeah. Bette Midler is going to be, let's uh, Rachel, <laughs> and their cousin, Eric. Let's just make up a name I'm for you. I'm all for it. Yeah. Yeah. Eric, yeah. though? Uh, you don't want to be Eric? What's your name? You want to be your real name? Yes. Okay. Well. Mm, How about my name's Alexander, but I keep trying to say that my name's Xander, but it's not taking with everybody, but I'm forcing it you to happen. You can't make your own nickname. Yep. You okay. just can't. Okay. No. Okay. <laughs> Listen, everybody watching, please give us a name for Alexander. If you don't like Eric, fair enough. I will take your uh, hatred of my pitch. <laughs> um, but just give us a... But don't you think we look... This is crazy. Ah, you guys, this is so exciting. My heart is beating like a million miles a Where's minute. Where's your camera? Is it there? It's here. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay, so let's do... Um, okay, now we're going to do some... Say, this is smoldering Take that John okay. Corbett taught me. You look over to the left of the camera and you think about something you're dying to eat at the end of the take. Smolder it. Ready? Mm. 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 Do you have to do the voice too? Yeah, a mm. little, little bit. Smolder it. Smolder. Nice work. We're hired. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, this has been another episode of On the Rocks Radio Show. Uh, Nia, where can our listeners and viewers follow you on social media? Oh, I'm under the very secret name of at Nia Vardalis. Yes. <laughs> and I love it so much. <laughs> what a complete treat. Thank you. We love women in film. Keep doing you, girl. We're going to see you on stage. Oh. Um, if you haven't read her book, please read her book. Um, and I, I can't wait to see what's next. TV uh, and movie? And, uh, there you go. On? Yeah. Can. All right. Okay. Thank you so much, Pasadena Playhouse. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Kurt. We'll see you next week. Thank you. Bye. This has been On the Rocks with Alexander. Every Tuesday at 7 p.m. on Universal Broadcasting Network. Find me on Facebook on On the Rocks Radio Show. Tweet me or Instagram me at On the Rocks On Air. See you next Tuesday.